How you doing? Good. You excited today? Yes, very excited. I heard you're a fan. A very big fan. For how long? Since the beginning of time. Really? Yeah, sure. Howard is uh, Howard for for me has um, set the foundation for a lot of the great things that I'm experiencing now. But I don't call myself the female Howard Stern. That is what white media calls me. But he's been a big influence on you. Oh, sure, sure. So what are you doing down here today? What, what are you uh, promoting? promoting stuff and meeting Howard. Cool. Yeah. Now, I heard you have a lot of stories about a lot of different people. You're uh, well, sort of famous for that. Well, I gossip. The foundation probably of um, my radio situation is gossip. <clears throat> but, um, and I do interviews. I've been called the publicist's worst nightmare. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm here to promote my novel, which is my third book, give Howard some of my champagne, and uh, just meet uh, the king of all media, as I am the queen of all media. Cool, sounds good. See you inside. Thank you. Bye. Wendy Williams is a radio host, and she is very well known. I've never met her. She wrote a novel called Drama Is Her Middle Name. And uh, what radio station is she on? I think they keep saying BLS. Is that not it? WBLS. Hey, baby. Look at you looking good. Got the belly shirt on, the big... (laughs) Hey, Wendy. (laughs) I've seen this broad picture in the paper before. Hi, Artie. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Howie. How are you? Good, thanks. You had A double A breasts, and then you went to a double D. Yeah, well, they were small for a, such a tall, st- sturdy woman. Right. And I uh, reconfigured myself. You really blew them out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm five eleven. I like to wear big heels. So yeah, you're not ashamed of your height. You wear the heels and everything. I'm six four today. Wow. Yeah. When you got your breast done. Yes. Because you had such little breast tissue, mm-hmm. was it difficult for the doctor to bring you up to a double D without sort of getting those deformed titty looks? No, because I had a fatty back. So I could immediately go. I went under the muscles immediately, and here they are. They've been great. So your tits look good. Yes. And yes. you love them. You love the <clears throat> yes. new... Do they feel natural? Yes, they do. And they sit natural. Wow. They have a little hang to them, so they. But the but the pencil does not drop. Okay. Like the or wait, the pencil drops. Right. They're still very you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, because now you have big breasts. I yes. mean, when you walk in the room, you're a presence. I mean, you've got <laughs> big, big, giant boobs. <laughs> you married woman? Yes, for seven years. I've been with my husband for thirteen. We have a five year old. White guy, black guy. A- a black guy. Ever do a white guy? No, no. Really? I grew up. I grew up around a lot of white people, um, group dates and things like that. But that was never really my thing. I grew up in the suburbs of New Jersey. I went to Northeastern University. Only attracted to black men. Um, here's the thing. My feeling is about interracial dating and and black women who date white men and whatnot. To each his own. But for me. There are only black men in my family, and nobody's ever molested me, done me wrong. You, you, you understand what I'm right. saying? Yes. I almost look at it like, why would I bring that to my father, my brother, my and and that's not really are my flavor. Are white people bad? N- no. no <laughs> I mean, I mean like, you've just never been attracted to a white man. Uh, not in the marital, go to the prom, bring bang you to them way. <laughs> bring bring you to Thanksgiving dinner kind of way. No. Right. So you have a good experience with black guys. Yes. It's not like a lot of black women will go, gee, black guys have always treated me wrong. I can't do it anymore. And I understand that also. I have right. girlfriends who feel like that. But no, my husband is, uh, he's from Brownsville, Brooklyn, so he, you could probably categorize him as super nigger. Oh, and, you're married and to super nigger. I, I love, he's my manager. What do you mean he's super nigger? <laughs> well, he's, he's just a, he's, he's, a, he's a really, he's a really special, he's exactly. When there's a problem in my life, in my career, with me, whatever. He, what does he do? For, is he a radio guy? No. My what? husband started out owning a hair salon and then a, a, um, a detailing shop. And then my career just became so much. It's a man's now world Now, you're still. a striking woman. You have blonde hair. Yes. Do uh, you dye it blonde? Or is, it, that, is that a wig? No, she was the, born a blonde hair. No, I mean, is it a wig? <laughs> Big fake clip-ins. <laughs> is that what that is? Yes. So you have Afro-American hair. It's just that you now straighten it and make it blonde. Do you get a lot of flack from black women for doing that? No. They don't because, care. You know, Robin... Well, who cares about you, your hair color? You know we, you know we black girls in our hair. Wait a second. <laughs> Neither one of you grew up in a black community. Excuse I can tell you something. Me, you excuse didn't. Excuse me, I certainly did. No, you didn't. I, I, I go back it. there now. 
<laughs> when, a, when a woman dyed her hair blonde in my community. Well, that was back then, though. Right. Yeah. These days, oh, excuse me. Now, now I got research on you, and it's a good thing you're here today because uh, we're talking about Christy Brinkley and Peter Cook. Your husband cheated on you. Yes. The current um, husband? Yes. <gasps> While well, I was still pregnant. With him? Yes. While you were pregnant, yes. he cheated on you. Why did you take him back? And should Christy Brinkley take back her cheating husband, Peter Cook? Go no. Ahead. Um, what I do you mean, no. Why I, should Christy not, but you did? Well, because she and Peter... <sighs> What's the difference between you and your husband? First of all, this is her fourth husband. So she's very familiar fifth. with... Fifth husband. Right. So she's very familiar with grabbing the kids, going it alone, and all like that. <laughs> right. When my husband cheated on me, and I'm not condoning cheating... Cheated with a black woman or a white a woman? A black woman. Okay, go ahead. But what I must say is that, Howard, I was on bed rest and could not have sex during pregnancy. It was a, right. I had had a layer of miscarriages. Five months, as a matter of fact. Two five months miscarriages. You're saying because your husband couldn't have sex with you, it was okay for him. He got a free pass. We were also, we were also both going through a huge emotional to-do with having this baby. I broadcast. The microphone was on my nightstand, you know, to keep my mind off a of possible another miscarriage. Yes. I was on bed rest for nine months it doesn't give somebody a pass to cheat i don't want to say that right but i will say that um you understood and and infidelity doesn't always mean divorce was and he hate. just uh sleeping <sighs> around or was he with one woman? it was one woman oh. how did you catch him how did you well how could he have been so dumb to get caught you're in bed you're in bed you're, you're getting bed get rest <laughs> but you're the easiest broad to cheat on i would say. i heard the phone ring go ahead and he got up and went into a guest room Yes. And and the rest kind of was history. You I, picked up the phone to no, listen. No, please, who does that? Tiptoe, tiptoe. Houses these days don't creak. So you tiptoed into the the room and listened in, and he was like, "Baby, don't worry about it." No, I, it was actually an argument. Right. And, like a fed up, like you know, bitch, please, like I one want, of those. I want to get rid of you. And you could tell uh, he's arguing with a woman. Oh yes, oh yes, yes. And so you confronted him. Yes. And uh, he fessed up. Immediately. I mean, there wasn't, it, 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 you know, my husband is no bitch ass, but there comes a time when you're just What do you mean so your husband's no bitch ass? Like, oh, baby, please take me. It's right. not like that. So look, I cheated. Okay, you caught me. Right. Uh, you, you, I don't want to leave. I still love you. Right. And, and you, you said, bought okay. the whole, uh, look, I can't have sex with you. Well, at that point, <laughs> I'd already delivered the baby. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But let me just say that I had gained 103 pounds oh, on bed rest. I, I can't imagine. I was. You were a whale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I, you and make I, Artie look like a lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. So, <laughs> and, and I had no idea how to be a mother. Right. I had a difficult time um, adjusting to this new 103 pounds. Right. I wanted to get back to work. Okay. I wanted to, you know, be the old wench. Now, when you make love with him, do you have any feelings of like, wow, he cheated on me? Doesn't it always? Do isn't it always there? Do you worry that it'll happen again? No, I don't worry because I've taken um, I, I, because I'm back to the old Wendy, and the old right. Wendy has the confidence not to worry about things like that. Ever have him spied on? Well, I do believe in PIs. Yeah, to have him spied on. Um, you not, had a you had a private investigator look at him. Uh, uh, paperwork. Right. You, you know, I, I, you know, and, and go for the girl. And just to, you know, because I'm not going to confront a woman. Do you know what I'm saying? But right. I will have you, you know, just take a look at what's he and what's all going on. And now you're confident that he doesn't cheat on you anymore. I'm confident that my husband and I are together for a very, very until forever type of way. Wow. Um, as for infidelity, yes, I'm confident at this particular point he's not uh, unfaithful to me. How'd you get into radio? Howard, I was an intern for Matt Siegel at KISS 108. You're talking about a Boston disc jockey named Matt Siegel. Yes. At KISS 108. Yes. You were the intern. Yes. You I went to college and you were an intern. Yes, I went to college. I worked at my college radio station, WRBB, okay. at Northeastern University. Right. Um, it was either go there or go to Emerson, a communications school. I wanted to uh -huh. be a newscaster. I right. grew up in the New York tri-state area. I looked at Sue Simmons and, and Rosanna Scotto and all these people. I said, I want to be a newscaster. You have you know? a nice face. I could see where you could work in uh, television. Well, then um, I was reading news at the college radio station. But what had happened, Howard, is the newscaster way of life, Robin, is not exactly for me. Oh, yeah? Well, I like the big hair. You know, I like uh, a little bit more of a dramatic look. And I like to go out and have my drinks at the club. You I don't like want to constantly be criticized for your lifestyle. Yes. Your personality. Yes. You can't just be the news person. Exactly. Right. So, uh, what, so you, where, what station are you on now? And forgive me for not knowing this. It's okay. WBLS here in New York. You are on WBLS. Yes, I work from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. I like to start the day part before it starts at 3, you do, see? Do you talk a lot or do you spin records? Well... 
we play about four or five records an hour. Oh, so it, you're, you're, you're you're doing a talk. I'm going to listen to you. She does a, but what does she do? She she does a syndicated show from three to six, is it? Yes. And no, from, do, from two to six, I'm syndicated. And then right. she does another hour just for New York after that. Which is all talk. Are you raunchy? Do you, do you mix it up? People, uh, you know, I, I have a good time. We do talk about circumcision, <clears throat> excuse me, anal sex. You do, talk, do you do anal sex? We, um, well, it's not my favorite, Howard, but, but you know. But you'll do it for your man. Uh, yes. Right. That's a good woman. Does he I, ask for that a lot? And I, uh, no, no, he does not. <laughs> did, he ever get, uh, did he ever get uh, mud on his uh, helmet? <laughs> well, I must tell you, Howard, <laughs> you'll have to ask him that. There come times when we, you know, we'll come in, it'll be late at night, and, you know. Be drinking. Yes. Right, and he gets mud on the helmet? I don't know. You'll have to ask he's, him that. He's, I don't, he's two feet away. Oh, is he? Ask uh, me if he ever got mud on the helmet. Right. And then I got, I got a whole bunch of stuff I want to <laughs> tell you about Wendy, too. What, what, and why does Angry Black hate uh, Wendy so much? Yeah, he I hate everybody. He, uh, Angry Black attacked you came to my radio show and was... Uh, by the way, I've entertained um, three of your people. Yeah. Uh, years ago, Fred the Elephant Boy used to date or have sex with, I don't know, somebody from my old radio station at You're kidding. Kiss. Yeah, how does that happen? And Fred the Elephant Boy yes, and had she, sex with a It was a, a girl, woman? right? It was a yes, girl? and she was a, a pretty attractive woman. I think that she was like more of, she, it, it made her feel closer to Howard or something. Oh I don't know. God. You're Is kidding that me. amazing? And there was this place. <laughs> Why? Up, now you've stopped the show dead in its tracks. We can't believe what we're hearing. Somebody would sleep with the Elephant Boy? Yeah. Da, get da, to, get to get to D. <laughs> to get to D. <laughs> I want da, that da. on the Dalmat. Dalmat. And then Angry Black was a guest on our show at the time you gave him a show here at Sirius. Yes. And, oh, yeah? and he came by to promote that. But he was, I don't know, he's like a strange guy. And then there was another one, King of, no, King of All Blacks came yes, to the show. King Angry of All Black. Black confronted me, my husband, and our five year old in a restaurant. And it was like, he was like real obnoxious. And he was angry. What is with you that you would do that to a woman and her family? With her family. Hey, hey now, old friend. Hey uh, now. Exactly what happened last February was I walked past her table over in uh, Wayne, New Jersey at Ruby Tuesdays. And I said to her, if you're going to have somebody on your show, don't have King, have Angry. This is after Which, King was there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, King was on in December. Uh, at which point, her punk husband decided to start mouthing off. Wendy never said one word to me. She simply looked over at me, and then he started getting loud. So I said to myself, perhaps I was out of line. So I walked back to the bar. Next thing I know, Kavina got up and came to the bar like he wanted to flex or something. So I said, whatever, son, whatever you want to do. Just, you know, whatever. No, he didn't. He would pound yeah, you. No, Please, you look. Is your husband a tough guy? He's big. Yes. Big man. Yes. Knock the shit out of Angry Black? Yes. Yes. In a minute. But you know what it was, Howard? F you. You know what it was? This, this was family day. Yes. Okay? He came over and said hello. He said that thing about the thing. And it was like, you know, okay, okay, bye. We got our five-year-old, who was at that point four. Right. I got my husband. Howard, you know how this business is. And it's particularly, Robin, tough on a woman. You know, you got to balance your career. You know, you got to you gotta balance the family. Right. You got to gather the food for dinner or whatever the hell. You got to kiss boo-boos. You got to go to school play. You know, when you're the woman, it's a lot harder. You're never a lot off. harder. Yeah. You're never, never off. off. Yeah. And this mother. You can say it. Fucker. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this say motherfucker it. was interrupting family day. Right. First of all, your food hadn't even arrived. And I'm apologizing for even coming. It doesn't you. matter whether the food hadn't arrived. Every single second counts. But all he said was, have me on. And all I said was, okay, fine. But, you know, call the booking office. Howard, if I saw you in a restaurant, I would never come over to you. As right. much as I, I admire you, right. I, would, I, I would do it this way right here. Understood. All right. Well, uh, Angry, you've pissed off one other person. Hey, all I know is Wendy's husband's really pissed in the green room about Angry oh, Black. No. Well, he Let him come in. Him again, well, he's a man, and he wants to, he's going to tell you off right now. Oh, he's coming in, man. The thing is, Howard, is yeah. that, uh, you know, you know there's a protocol and whatnot, and you also understand family time. Well, your I husband know you looks do. like a tough guy. Yeah, He's... I wouldn't mess with him if I was angry black. Well, this guy looks like every guy would beat the shit out of me. <laughs> how you doing? What's up? That's Kevin. Uh, hey, Kevin. How you doing? What's going on? You want to say anything yeah, to angry black? You, you look like you could pound the angry black right into the ground. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, my wife being who she is, you know, and you dealing with the same type of popularity, yeah. you deal with all kinds of people. I think when he approached us, you know, we was like, okay, you know, Call the booking agency, you know, we with our family, you know, that's cool. He just was very persistent. Yeah. Trying to be antagonizing and it was almost like a, it was, a, was it was almost like an act, you know what I'm saying? He then, was right. goading my husband. And then, and then at the end of the day, we it's, at the end of the day, we frequent we frequent the restaurant a lot, so the managers know us. And they know we're not that them kind of people. So 
I was like, what's going on? He was still like at the bar screaming, whatever. So I walked over. No, no, no. I, I tried to be nice no, about no, it. I, I said, I walked over to him. I said, listen, man, we don't want no problems. And then he just put on this big front, like, yo, 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 and all this other. And the know, reason why he walked away is because our it. son is there. Like, you know, right. you know what I'm saying? You, you know what? You're right about that. I, I apologize, sir. You're right. Your child was in Yeah, you should apologize. But, but Kevin came over like he wanted to flex. And I, and yeah, was, because you was very disrespectful. And at the end of the day, man, when I'm with my family, man, you know, all that, all, all that, all that, you know, show business stuff is one thing. But when I'm with my family, it's a very sacred thing. And you should have took, you should have been more discreet. You should have had more respect. And you know, you was like a novelty act. He was really like a novelty act. You know what I mean? a tough guy. I would like to be involved in some of this kind of... I wish I had been at the restaurant. I would have enjoyed this. This would have been great. <laughs> at the end of the day, how would... What restaurant was, is this? It was Ruby Tuesdays in Wayne, New Jersey. This is, we're going Willow over to grab a burger. I was gonna, I'm going to go over to Ruby Tuesdays and hope you guys show like up there. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for you and the, and the respect, I know my wife has endearing respect for you. I Thank mean, you. like, relentless... Thank you. We, we, would, we would not have even... If he would have came up and, and been anything other than what he was, which is a, a, a character in your show, yes. it would have been a whole different situation. Yeah, so we gave him a certain amount of respect, and he kept the clown thing going like he got on the air today, Kevina, whatever, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. We in the street, man. Don't worry about it. I'm not hard to find. Oh, yeah, shut yes up. Yes, you are. Right. You wanted a lawsuit. You was trying to get a lawsuit that day. Yeah, exactly, That's Howard. What That's what he wanted. He wanted you know? a hit and a lawsuit. Hey, uh, Angry Black, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Kevin. He could totally whip your ass. Well, well, I'm yeah, we hope you survive. Let's take that to the Bugatti. <laughs> we can take that to the Bugatti and put money on it. That's right. <laughs> we can, you know. What, what's your, what, uh, Angry Kevin, Black, I'm at Gleason's Gym every day. Ask anybody about me, man. I work out relentlessly, man. Gleason, yeah, Gleason's in Brooklyn. You look like a tough guy. Sh shout out to Blip, my trainer. Have you ever uh, done any jail time or anything like nah, that? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> Why do you say that, Howard? Because <laughs> I can see this brother really has worked out quite a bit. It looks Bro, like he has some he prison. Uh, no, I, I, haven't, I haven't done any jail. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you get the tattoos. I haven't thing. done any jail time, but right. I must say I'm a, um, from Brownsville, as my wife said. You know, yeah. from the projects. Those don't look like prison tattoos. How did you avoid no. jail growing up in Brownsville with the cops and everything? I mean, how did you avoid it? How did I avoid it? Yeah, well, I mean, you barely you, I mean, in but I mean, for the I mean, grace of God. I mean, you know, a, a product of the environment. You know, you just—it's it's almost like a gamble. You know, what were I mean? you ever in a gang or anything nah, like this? No, nothing. Gangs, no gangs. What are you doing? What I do you? Start you, my own gang. You got you. You, you go to the gym. Are you, yes. you a professional athlete or something like nah, that? No, no athlete. He uh, he manages Wendy. Is that what I you thought, do? It's a full-time job. What, what do you got to do to manage Wendy? Well, we have champagne. I, Would you like... Uh, I brought you some oh, champagne. I heard you, you market a champagne. Not just market. I am I am um, a, a very large co-owner. Right. Plus, I'm the face of... I'm the new face of Alizé, right. which is, you know, a huge deal. I'm three books yeah, deep. The, I I thought, yeah, I'm a, I I'm a double New York Times bestseller wow. with my autobiography. Oh. And then my story after that was about yeah. me and radio. Now, this new book is a double book deal with, um, you know... You know, Double Day, Random House, Harlem Moon. Um, drama is her middle name. The right. follow-up to that will be out in January. You and write all these books? Yes. And my series starts on VH1 in October, the What's Wendy the Williams series? Experience. Well, God, Howard, you set the, the groundwork for the camera in the studio. Oh, so it's a camera on your radio. Yes. So. Hey, Howard. I Howard, see, yeah. This is where i got to jump in because Wendy was, I was talking to her in the green room. She told me uh, what I found to be a fascinating story. So remember you were at E-Television and they decided not to renew your deal? Oh, that's right. They called Wendy and her husband. Ted Harbert called Wendy and her husband. Right. Flew them out to L.A. Because yep. Ted's the originator right. of all good right. ideas. <laughs> love, love Wendy's yeah, show. Was anyway. yeah. Love Wendy's show. Ted came back to New York and sat in the studio. How many days did he sit in the studio watching you? He, he flew us out there, loved so much. He came and sat the whole you know five-hour show right. like a fly on the wall in the studio. Uh -huh. And um, then, I don't know whatever happened with that, hon. Whatever happened with that? I mean, they Ryan Seacrest no showed right? up with knee pads. Well, no, and, money. no money. No money. And they wanted too much of a clean show. Like, right. And, yeah, and yeah. also a lot of L.A. back and forthy. It was it was like a whole thing and you know it's clear to me Howard I would imagine that radio was your first love yes. before everything uh, absolutely TV anything and so for me radio is my first love mm -hmm. so to take me and say well you have to come out to LA a certain amount of times where I'm missing my show right and they don't respect fall book they meaning anybody but radio people fall book spring book most important thing in radio please ratings. Howard, ratings Howard are everything. I am just to the point 20 years I'm celebrating being in professional radio it's just been about the last year that I feel comfortable taking off Black Friday right to answer your question you, you know aside from uh, managing this monstrous talent uh you know i've owned some real estate yes own clothing stores i'm pretty much an entrepreneur i throw events you know i stay pretty busy i, I bet you got a big penis ah. i'm looking uh, you over it, it, i don't it, know it, anything it's, about it's it it's a pretty decent size yeah, I, mean, I bet you, you know. give it to her real good that's yeah, what you we, think we, yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. After she the, give it to uh, you really good. Yeah. Infidelity. You huh? took him back. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Hey, can you ask about the mud? No, the mud on the helmet thing. What? Oh yeah. Did you ever get any mud on your helmet when you do the anal? You can be honest. Wendy has a very clean rectorial. I get colonics. She keeps it very. You do the colonics. I get colonics. Yes. Yeah. That's a good manager. She's a sexy woman. How did you now? How do you meet a broad like this? I mean, this chick's an earner. Actually, uh, I was actually managing on the DJ at the time, and uh, she was uh, hosting an event at a skating rink. Will you toss your man salad? <laughs> <laughs> I would do anything that he wanted me to, but he never asked me to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little uptight about that yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah, it's a little... Yeah, yeah. It's hard to kiss him out there. It's not like the other thing. You Maybe know? that's why you had a girlfriend for a while. Let her toss your salad, go home and kiss your wife. <laughs> well, I, I will say, and I'm sure you can attest to this, that yeah. uh, a girlfriend is different. From a wife, you, you nah, know, absolutely. A wife is sacred. So, so what do you think? You better not cheat again. I think she tossed you this uh, time. I think if we cheat, we cheat together. That's our bond. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, have you ever done anything like that? You, you got a threesome? A woman, uh, into the bedroom? No. Wendy, you tried a little threesome, no. baby? No. no. Tell the truth. No, no. You gonna bring some girls home? <laughs> How you no. doing? How about you? No. I say that to say we ride hard for each other. Yeah, we do. Like, How about you two and Angry Black? <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, fucking pounding. <laughs> hey, I got a question about uh, Wendy. That 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 rock on your left hand—that's real, right? Yes. Very real. So what who buys it? You you buy that or he no. buys it? Oh. No, he buys it. But this was actually upgraded this year. We're celebrating our seventh year married. So my main stone is now a seven carat stone. Jesus. How wow. much does a ring like that I, cost? A lot. Seriously, I gotta know. Six figures. I mean, two hundred thousand? Not that much. One hundred fifty? Expensive, a little, huh? A little less than that. Because the thing is huge. It's a massive. Look, look what I got for Mother's Day—a Hello Kitty. How, not, how much does a thing like that cost? I'm not a bum, Howard. I, I get it. I, I, know, I, I, I get it all. We're in a lot of bling. Yeah. He gets, but Robin, you <laughs> love wise? jewelry. Is that wise do, in radio to sink all your yeah, money in jewelry? I, oh, we don't do that either. It's not. I mean, yeah. Howard, we're not the $500 million family, but we do okay. And yeah, we have connections. And right. we're not we're not like super Negroidian in our expenditures, but there are what... <laughs> what you understand what I'm mean? saying? Yes. Well, you know what a Negroidian <laughs> expenditure is. That's when, you, that's when you have a Maybach, but you live in the projects. Uh. Or you have a Maybach, but you have a little, you know... N no. Is there a prenup between the two of you? No. No. Nothing. No. Split 50-50. That's how it's got to be. I might give her everything. Start fresh. What, uh, are you, so are you real sorry about cheating? Do you have to apologize all the time for that, or are we passed that? Let me tell you something. It actually adds a little zest in my storytelling. It, I kind of... When we, when, we <laughs> when we elected to put that story in the book, it was to make the fans understand that Wendy is reachable, real, real story. You know, we didn't have to do that. Right. See, I think where people get comparing to Howard is just because I'm an honest person. I, right. And I, Howard, I did not fashion my career after you. I'm simply a girl. If you know the Cosby family, that's my family, and I'm Lisa Bonet. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, you're light-skinned black woman in a dark-skinned well, family. What no. I, <laughs> would I cheat again? <laughs> nah. Hey, well, how do we get to that? Are you going to cheat again? How are you going back to that? Well, nah, what I, do you mean I, you're Lisa Bonet? Well, do you remember how weird she was in the family, like the different yes. one? The yeah. mother and father. My parents just yesterday celebrated their 49th year anniversary. My sister went to Tufts. Met her, you know, her now husband. My brother is, you know, a school teacher. Everybody's very cookie cutter. Do people say, oh, you sound white. They used to. They used to say and that. Now, now they they might still say it, but Are you know what? Are you the what? one person in your family that sounds white? Is no, everybody, everybody, more? everybody is layered in degrees. I come from a scholarly family, That's so when, what she's when I brought him they home, came from a family of scholars, yes, and she's sort of like he's the wild the card too. Guy. What is yeah. your What is your problem with Method Man, the famous rapper? Uh, Do you have some sort of uh, war going with him? No. What's uh, going on? Nothing. Uh oh! <laughs> what would you do to Method Man if you're nothing? So? Uh, we got respect for Method. Let me see man. what I read about this. Wendy is currently fighting with rapper Method Man. He's angry at her for talking about his wife's cancer. Oh, so this was a big war. She never spoke. She never announced that his wife had cancer. Wendy, go ahead. see Howard. Do it's you... smart to avoid that crap. Yeah. Well, Howard, I have to tell you. Do you know how people will send you medical records? And you feel violent. You you feel like because you're also a patient someplace. It's like my God, why do doctors' offices send things like this? But there's listeners everywhere. And even though you don't want to read it, you read it. All it all it was was that she was sick. I, I never see. said the c word. Okay. You know. Um, so there was a, a bit of a uh, of a thing. Howard you disclosed, then he wasn't ready to tell people. Robin Howard. Right. This was six or seven months ago. Right. But he's got a CD coming yeah, out. Real sensationalized publicity. Now like, we, we respect Red Method Man. And sorry to hear about your wife. And that's right, it. and that's I it. apologize. Yeah, hey, you gotta be smart about that. But we got a gift for you, man. <laughs> Don't argue hey, with Howard, rappers. We have a gift. 
You have a gift for me. Yes. If we can. Do you love champagne, Hal? Uh, I do. Well, I've got a bottle of, um, actually, we bought you the best. There are four levels of my champagne. There's the black label, which is the Brut, right, right sweetheart? Right. Then there's the gold. What is that equivalent to? It's first crew. That's equivalent to Vouv Clicquot. And Vuv. then we, go, uh, we got the platinum, which is equivalent to? Cristal. Cristal. And then is we, it hard to launch a champagne? I mean, do you have to, is it hard to get in the stores? Well, it's, it's a process. You got to get clearances from state to state. We have a whole team working on that. And then the rosé is the, the top of the line. So we bought you a platinum and a rosé, and we bought some very nice Howard Entertainment to bring it in for you. Oh, really? Because we have a model in the agency also, PPG Stallion. They add the sexy to the Boy, party. you guys work like what, crazy. What, what don't you own? All over we're everything. Trying. We're, 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 we're trying to be like you. Howard. We're trying to get well, that I'm going to give you guys something. I'm going to give you my producer, Gary. You can <laughs> you. I can do what you want. I with. got a question for Wendy, though, because I was looking at the notes on Wendy. You were married once before, right? Yes, I and, was. And I oh. heard that the way you got rid of that guy was crazy. Yeah, well, it wasn't crazy. It was. Would you what, kill him? It, practically, I what killed the do? spirit. What did you do? I waited for him to go to work. I had two of my friends around the corner and the big father son moving truck. I didn't touch one thing for legal purposes. And no, I didn't have an attorney coaching me. I just knew what to do. I sat while the movers packed everything up, left the key at the front desk. We were living in a high rise at the time. When the slob came home at five o'clock, he found a key. Uh, the locks changed, and I was gone. I had already secured another apartment for myself, and that's the end of that marriage. I put everything in storage, never touched a thing, had the movers do everything. Notarized, I didn't touch anything. Well, what happened that's there? It. Did he cheat on you, too? No! He it just wasn't working, Howard. We were married for five months. It wasn't working. At that point, Robin, you have to decide. Don't you think it's nice to tell the guy first before yeah, you I mean, do you that? Don't we did. We had, we had a final fight. Right. And in the final fight, I just said, you know what? I've had it. This is not working. Right. So we had a big wedding, like 200 people and all like that. Me and Kev, we went to, literally looking like this, we went to Jersey City Municipal Court, got married by Grace Jones's brother. Wow. That was seven years ago. We've been together ever since. <laughs> like, I just can't. Now, what about this uh, piece of ass you had on the side? Was she super hot? Not hotter than me. No, wait a second. No. But you're mad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, what is that? I said, I'm there was skepticism. No, I'm answering this question. Was she very different than she Wendy? Was. Very. Imagine a small, quiet girl. What she was, you know, during that time, as my wife stated, it was a very trying time. Absolutely. You know, it, wasn't, it wasn't just like, I mean, every man has tendencies or whatever, but. What we were going through with the stress, it was just crazy. The, the, that whole baby How thing, man. Was. Happens to a she lot of men. She wasn't a friend, was she? No. No, thank no, God, no. Robin. <laughs> she was so where'd you pick this broad up? She was the exact opposite. Of, where'd you uh, find this broad? At the gym, probably. <laughs> nah, not at the gym. <laughs> where, where'd you find her? <laughs> through work-related travels. You know, I'm always out and about in the street. He's got to be. And what am I supposed you know, to do, Howard? Say, uh, don't go out? I'm Someone not... told me you met her on yeah. J-Date. No. <laughs> no, <J-Date. laughs> no. Actually, actually, I met her at the bank. At the bank. Yeah. Here's the thing, Howard. Hold it. I want to hear more. Okay, details. okay. I know this is tough for you, but we got to hear it. No, it's right. not yeah, tough. We, 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 yeah. we released oh, yeah. the information a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long did it take you to get in her pants? Two seconds. Two seconds. He's hot. Right? Actually, it wasn't, you know, it, the girl worked at the bank, okay? Right. And it was an ongoing. Where do you bring her to bang her? Because you can't go home. Wendy's laying there with the kid. It was a hotel. At a hotel. Listen, right. we were living in South Jersey. All the banging was going on in North Jersey. I got I got exiled from New York by Hot 97. I had to fight a lawsuit and wait for a non Why did you cause. get sued by Hot 97? No, I sued them and Why? I won. Why? Um, wh- how did that all happen? Didn't you get into well, a fist fight with one of the DJs? No, yeah, no. Well, it, was a, it wasn't exactly a fist fight. It was, <laughs> that was sensationalized. That, also. Yeah, you know what it all came down to? They didn't... They it were, came down to gay rappers. That's what it was Gay rappers and, 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 and exposing and, and exposing. You were exposing gay rappers. Oh, so you got in a fight with a gay guy? No. <laughs> How you it's doing? Just, it's just a lot of gay rappers. <laughs> and they ganged up on us. It was a lot you of You mean them. part of your radio act is to get on the air and say, I've learned that a rapper is gay. Sure. And you will out them. No. I will get a Tourette's moment maybe 45 minutes from now. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be at 45 minutes from them. I'll be in the, then I'll be in the middle of another story, shoe shopping or whatever. And then I'll say rapper's name, and then I'll go back to the shoe shopping talk. I see. So, so why did you? Why get... do you feel you can, ra- uh, you know, out people like that? Well, it's you know, interesting. Ra- I think that's it's, wrong. It's interesting. Well, you know what, Howard? It might be wrong, but it's not like I am doing it attached to the same. You know what it is in, in, the, in the rap community, right? You know, and growing up straight from the projects, you know, you idolize a lot of these rap dudes, and you know, they, they tough have this, guys. They have this image, and yeah. the DL thing and, and, is, know, is ruining women right about now. It's, it's That's all true. Gangsted out, 
and these kids are following it. And it's like at the end of the day, once I got to get to this inner circle where I thought, you know, everybody was tough and rough, and then you see everybody just really soft and pink, and it's just, it's like deceiving. Everybody's community. doing each other in the ass. Yeah, <laughs> it's like deceiving. Yeah. You know? So we yet, had, you yet know? still hollering bitches and hoes in music and, and smacking video hoes' asses in songs. You homo. Oh, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying, how deceiving is that? So you uh, you felt that uh, so you got on the air and you got fired for doing that? Well, I didn't get fired. What they did, Howard, they didn't fire me. Instead, they paid me to stay at home. Now, as you know, in our business, you That's they death. forget it. It's it death, right? So you need I, to work exactly, right? And I could have stayed at home and shopped, but my career, Howard. Right. So what I did, I hired the attorney firm in Jersey. We sued Hot 97 to be released from my contract. Okay. I got out of my contract. The which judge is, agreed with you. Which with is victorious. Money. With money. Wow. And a piece of a non-compete clause. So now I'm still on the sidelines. So why were you fired? Because of the rap thing? I guess she was ruining careers. You know, I, they, well. didn't, they didn't fire me. Remember, they right. said they you, sit on, the you side to sit on the sideline. Indefinitely. Even I though see. Wendy was a very big earner for, you know, they inherited, you know, WQHT inherited Wendy from 98.7. Kiss. It's not, it's not Kiss. like they made her, but, you know, at the time it was... A million dollar game getting swirled. So then you right. got hired by WBLS. No, as soon as you, no. I had to get exiled, so I waited my non compete out in Philadelphia at Power ninety nine. Okay. The next closest community without really having to go. So while I'm living in South Jersey working at Power ninety nine, he's up here boning the bankstress. Okay. Oh. Oh, you see, we're, we're bringing Boy, this that, around. That was a tough time. It was yeah, a very strange. tough time, so it Howard. Lot, it was a big strain, and you know. We talk about it. At Did the you time. ever think about leaving Wendy no, completely never. for that woman? No, we we got blood. We like blood. We, but she, see, that she was would never, never a leave part me, and I would it. never leave her. It yeah. was never a part of it. He was just like. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't take her for granted. Yeah. I, I don't take her for granted. Yeah. She's a very smart, you know. How many times a week you do her? Who her? Yeah. A lot. Oh gosh. A lot. We have a very uh, active sex still. life. A lot. Still. Seven, we've known 13 years. We've been together since the first date. And we've been married what, for seven. Six, seven times a week? About that. <sighs> Look at you. Yeah. Wow, I can't <laughs> believe we're talking about this. Why? What's I mean, we feel co- you know how it but does we that? Have, but I got to tell you something. We have a lot of sex. <laughs> yeah. That's and that's just the way it is. You blow him a lot? Can we bring the can we bring yes. in the gift? Can we please bring And not only that, gift, not only that, but it's gotta be interesting sex, Howard, you yeah. know? Like, like, what? What's the what, what do you do, do to do? make it interesting? Well you go you do places. Where do you go to, to have sex that keeps a it interesting? A side alley after a club? You'll do it outdoors. Call me a different name. We, have a, very, we have a very imaginative Creative. I mean that's what keeps it hot. Yeah. And it's almost like rock stars. We like the black time really in Have Ever role play your white? Excuse me? Have a role play that you're white? A white couple? <laughs> have, real, have real boring how, sex? How do you do that? <laughs> so how do you do that? You yeah. pretend you're white, that's all. You have, no. shit, you have shitty sex. <laughs> no, but, but you... You um. You put on Jay Leno and you sit there and you watch it and you pretend you're white. Do you know, Howard, your E! show, when you were on E! has been the background of, yes. of many fuckalations. Right, Especially really? Yes, oh, right. sure. Yes, nice. Sure, you watch Howard. porno together? Well, you yes. yes. You do? Yes. What kind of porno do you like? Oh, yes. Well, all kinds. All kinds. Not, not, not Teen anal? <laughs> <laughs> ah, who knows? But do you film yourselves? You say no. you like, no, 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 hell no, 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 hell no. <laughs> no, 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 no film, no. huh? No yeah. video. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get in the champagne business? How much money do you have they to They offered up? this deal to Puffy, believe it or not. I don't yeah. even know if we've ever talked about that. Did you get no. fired for making fun of Puffy? Something like something that. Like that? Well, I, listen, you figure it out. Something you like that. You do the music of what was playing back in 1980, 1998 on the majority of every radio station 25 Is times Puffy an hour. Is Puffy your enemy? No. No. Does he, is he mad at you? No. We have... We have I a think, little scared. Mu- but he's, he's scared of me. He's scared of you? Yes. He respects you? He, yes. And I respect him, but I am not scared of him, and I will not do some staged interview with him. Well, now that you're in the champagne business, are you afraid of some of the, the toes you've stepped on? You know, it'd be nice oh, no. if some no, of these guys were now swigging your champagne instead of Cristal in their videos. That right? would be nice, but this deal, um, like I was saying, was originally offered to Puffy. And um, when Puffy's What people, is the deal? You put your... You, 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 you have involvement in the champagne. Half owners of the champagne. Half owners of the company. You have to put up money. We actually... We actually no, actually, no. We, we did it's some marketing. It's a sweet-ass deal. Well, how, just, is it, how do you get a deal where you don't have to put up money? Oh, I'm going to explain it. We did some marketing for the company, which was a consolidated company at the, t- at the time, rapping brands. And they put out some various uh, rap artists, liquor. 
And whenever they do that, they come to us. They're like, you know, we want y'all to help us market it, whatever, whatever. We want this so liquor was, to be the big, the big sponsor at whatever party I'm doing and like that. So there was this big liquor scissor that we helped. So you own fifty percent of the champagne? Yes. Forty-seven percent. Forty-seven percent. Wow. As Have you gift. seen any money from it yet? Not yet. It's fairly new. We you launched it, it in December. We should buy New Year's. You know, we're working hard this year. It's really good. When you when you try the product, let us know. We'll send you over case after case. I'm sure I'll love it, yes. Yeah. yeah I don't know if you've uh, finished talking about a bunch of stuff, but there was something in the notes that I also found uh, oh. fascinating, which was the 10-year, 4-gram-a-day cocaine habit. Oh, oh you yeah. did? Oh, yeah. No kidding. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I, I don't seem like the type to us. No, you know. It's probably why I did it because I, I wasn't molested. I wasn't any of the nutty thing reasons that you know people turn what to drugs. What were you running from? Probably the squeaky clean suburban girl that I grew up as. I grew up being called white girl, and I and I and you I grew up being called white girl. I was always you have very white features, don't oh, you, Howard? You do. <laughs> She's the you almost look like, no, there. she looks like a white. Well, she you look like a white woman with a tan sometimes. To me. <laughs> Howard. So, and then when I went away you know? to college, I, you know, I did want to be down with the the clique and be a sorority girl and all like that. Why did it fit in? And my life, and I don't know whether this is true of you, but I find of many of the best radio people, a source of our craziness is the loneliness, the talking in our heads, the 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 being different from our siblings being different from our friends at least that's how it was for me when i found college radio i was sideswiped by it i started out as a newscaster didn't think i was cool enough to be a dj but realized that i could keep big hair and nails and stuff being a jock i got my own internship with matt siegel and that was it i've never had another job you could pass for italian <laughs> Two weeks after Cecilia. college graduation, my first job was in the is in St. Croix for three twenty five an hour. My parents considered it graduate school. Right, that's 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 what my father said. My first job was graduate school. Yeah, yes, that's what he told me. What Someone's town in you. Jersey are you from? I'm from Ocean Township, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Listen, uh, every I bet time you're wild in bed. I bet you are. I'm looking you over. <laughs> we, I'm thinking you're a firecracker. We have a good time, Howard. I bet we do. And Howard, would you ever make a sex video? Would you ever show yourself on well, camera? They said nude? no video. No, but you know what? I would take some tasteful pictures you would yeah you would be nude would you do playboy actually we were going to do playboy then i found out i was pregnant this was back when we were in philly yeah, they were doing a special on uh, radio, radio chicks, chicks yeah. oh wow yeah. yeah yeah you should do it show up those big titties what else did you have done you know the lipo a little lipo, lipo yeah. tummy tuck no kidding yeah nose job no no people ask me that though no is it cute yeah, you got a cute little nose. Thank you. Yeah, you look good. Thank you. I would, I would bang you definitely. I um, I believe in maintenance, Howard. Sure. And people... Uh, you take good care of yourself. You know, you got nice hair, you got the yeah, nails. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I respect that. Yeah. You know, I mean, hey, it, it, it's, that's good for you. Because otherwise, you'd be right out the door, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, <laughs> be, that's not true. Still with the bank check. <laughs> when, I, when I met her, when I met her, actually... He met me raw. Did you ever say some crap about Robin? Someone called in and said you really uh, blasted Robin. N no, but what I have said about Robin was when your show didn't get picked up, I could not understand it and you guys talked about it and I consider you guys like supreme media insiders on radio and I thought Robin you would have known better than to talk about a show that wasn't actually coming on and the idea that it didn't come on I'm like God if they could screw Robin they could screw anybody you know how many pilots I've made Oh, yeah. Oh, We've please. With the, tubs, the, right? with the Wendy Williams show, you're going to be the next Oprah. You're going to be this. Network TV, I'm back and forth to L.A. By the time I went to Ted about this whole thing where he called... We're like, whatever. This was like my umpteenth since right. 1992. I have made so many pilots for Sony. I was supposed to be on that that uh, that Younger View show. Yeah, that Kamara Lee. Conglomeration Kamara with Kamara Lee. I was supposed yeah. to do that. Just yeah. so much <laughs> crap. And Anybody I, I, hit you up for The View to take over? No, uh, no, because now I'm like, I guess, a publicist's worst nightmare or something. And... I see. Like they I already had that. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't be in that setting, Howard. Well, I still don't know. I still want to see photos of the chick you were banging on the side. Uh, I'd like to see that. The bank chick, I call it. Right her. now, she doesn't look like she used to. How do you know? <laughs> how do you know that? Because you know you hear things. No, you, you don't. You see things. No, I didn't see anything. I heard things. <laughs> <laughs> she don't look the same though. Well, what if she did? I'm just telling them like you think. Well, she's I gotta hot tell you right something. Now. I no gotta respect her. I mean, you know. Where okay. did you see her? I did not see it. Yes, you did. No, Saji actually saw it. He told me she Ew. looks horrible. All right. Saji knew? I was going to say, everybody knows? Oh, everybody uh, knew but me. <laughs> yeah, so look, so, but the thing is that when Kev and I met, I had never gotten, I had, had, did not have any plastic surgery. Like, he met me absolutely raw. Right. And You're saying you look a lot better now. Oh, please, I we fixed myself do. up. But I must tell you, when, when we met, I already knew Robin. It was already in my mental budget 
to get that done. At, yes. oh, of course. Okay. I see. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, you've got a lot going on. Can we bring your champagne in? Please. Sure. Well, I bought you the sexy with the champagne. Oh, yeah? Watch what a you stripper? got going on. A black girl and an Asian girl. Yeah. You're going to no love kidding. them. Yeah. Well, we these are our sexy. PPG How come black stallions? guys will do Asian women, but they're hesitant to do white women because the white woman is a bad thing to... Oh, whoa. <laughs> no. Never mind that answer. <laughs> now you'll shut up. Hey, honey. <laughs> wow, I like what's going on with you two broads. Where are you girls working that you're running around like this? You strippers? <laughs> no, we're not no, strippers. We are models. PPG models. stallions. That's right. No, no, no. You're strippers. No. <laughs> no. You're right. model strippers. Yeah. Where are you modeling? <laughs> Absolutely not. Where do you model? Fuck Kevin Hunter. Don't fuck Kevin Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking Kevin Hunter, we got a whole nother situation. Uh, no, really, I, I see. Oh, these are, oh, these are your models. Huh? Yes. Oh, yes. And, and what, what happens with them, in addition to you know, getting them photo shoots and exposure and things like that, when you invite me to host a party, like I want Wendy to host the party, I come, the girls, we have like six more of them. It's a beautiful thing. No homo. But I bring the sexy to the party. You girls don't do any lesbian stuff? A lot of different flavors. No, we don't. No? They no. dance with each other. Who, who, like, who hires and screens the models? We have casters. I have a whole staff, you know. Look at you. Stop starting shit, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, I guess you got to approve of each model individually, meet with them. And no, them. no, it's very professional, as the girls will tell you. you know. I smell very disaster all over this modeling agency. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest you know? with you. I don't think it's going to go know well. You know what? Yeah, all we are very secure. Kevin thought, I need a modeling agency. Yeah, yeah you know, my yeah. wife doesn't trust me. I'll start a modeling agency. Yeah, my God, what a it's movie. Our, it's it's a good... our modeling agency. Yeah, I know. Sure, I know all about Here's it. Here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. When I get off the air at 7 o'clock, I got to, you know, so, uh, in addition you to... You put him in lockdown. <laughs> well, well, you know, we got this kid at home that all of a sudden I have to do the mommy hat. So if the trust is not there between us, then what the hell I mean, do we have? Out, we're out religiously. Girls, what happens at the auditions? Uh, <laughs> yeah, how do you... Yeah. Well, it's a standard audition. We have to walk for the casting Why don't you do that the audition there right here? Now, is Kevin alone well? when, he, when he auditions Absolutely you? Absolutely not. There's mm. always a team. Question mark entertainment in full. Mm. Yeah. Question mark entertainment. That's Kev's um, And manager. Kevin is working Let's hard. Hard with each of, and Kevin is working hard with you guys? The entire you. group is working hard with us. They're That's really it. nice girls. We brought them to Puerto Rico. We're about to bring them. I'm going down. One of my affiliates is in North Carolina. You We're girls go attracted down there. to Kevin, a handsome man. I could see where you might find him attractive. True. We respect him. You yes. do respect Very him. Very much yes. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is this walk they have to do for Kevin? Let me see okay. the walk. What walk did you do to get the job? Let me see the walk. <laughs> this is my case, by the way. This is me, Howard, on my own champagne case. Oh, you're very, very attractive in that picture. Well, you know? thank you, yes. Howard. Yes. Go ahead. Let me Go see ahead, the girls. Walk. walk for Howie. Let me see. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're hired. Look at That's that. the runway walk, isn't it? <laughs> oh, she bit her finger. Honey, you got some booyah. I'll be honest with you. Look at that. Oh, good for you. How old a girl are you? In your 20s? In my 20s, yes. Yes, yes. That's yes. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, you're doing very well. Aside from the radio career, you got champagne, you got books. Uh, hey, good for you. I'm and glad you're doing well. The queen well. of all media. Do you mind? Uh, it, it, I'm successful I've, at all that I've you done. You want to be the queen far. of all media? You you have fun with that. Is there a, <laughs> is there a queen to your king? Robin. You Not that I know of. No, I, Robin, I'm talking... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> wow. I don't know what she means. We don't know what you mean. By the way, can I just ask you just to wrap up? What? Uh, the queen the of all media is the chick in the bank. I didn't want to tell you. I gave oh. you that. <laughs> okay, you you. <laughs> no, but, but you want to know what? Um, can I just ask you, so whatever happened with Sony? Because this is very insightful We're for me. We're still and the, sort of talking. But they got Megan Mullally behind yeah. your back and all these. But you know what? Everybody gets off a sitcom and they want to do a show. And the higher profile girl is lately getting the gigs. Even though they don't work out, yeah, yeah. We met her brother a few what are you times. supposed to do? We met her brother. Yeah, is he, now yeah. there's a guy in New Jersey who what? says he's my brother. <laughs> oh. I don't know the man. Oh. Uh, it's just it's okay. not my oh, brother. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. That's uh, Zeppo Quiver. <laughs> 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 Howard is That's her brother, by the way. It is a... It is a... Yes, it's her brother. It is a... What is that? That's oh, uh, Zeppo. Zeppo. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is a, it an honor, Harvard, though, to, yes. to meet you. An honor to meet you guys. I wish you well in your career. I will tune in and hear your show on WBLS, and uh, good luck with Terrestrial Radio. I find it uh, difficult to work in, but uh, I'm happy right here, and you come back and uh, check in with us once now, in a while. Now, can I ask you if I was fired from Terrestrial Radio? Come on over. Come on over. We'll talk.
Thank you, King. I can get you $250 a show. <laughs> <laughs> and anything else you need. Don't you worry about it. Right? right? <laughs> well, we've talked uh, to another guy. Yeah. We're in the negotiations right now. Guy needed $5 million. We gave him $250. $250. But uh, nice meeting all of you. And Thank I wish you, you luck with the champagne and everything else. And uh, Wendy Williams, everyone. And check out her uh, book, Drama is Her Middle Name, which is about a woman who has Ritz drama. Ritz Harper. And she's a disc jockey in New York. Loosely based on me, but mostly it's based on Ritz. All right. And sex scenes are in the book? Yes. There are. Sex yes. Scene. Anal. A lot of drama. A lot of drama. She's, she, and she, the book opens up, she's shot dead on the sidewalk. Right. Left for dead, basically. Hey, can I just say one thing? I want to give Wendy a big shout out because you know what I love about her that I got out of this whole interview? She works her ass off, oh, right? Yeah, she does. And then when she's done, she doesn't turn to Kevin. She knows it's now time to go home. And do all that shit. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Listen to him. But, he's he's got a bad deal but then, going on. That's what you hear. But then I must tell you, at one at midnight, I you know after the baby's in the bed and everything, I put on my little to do and my glitter and big hair and back out to the club. How do you do it? So you I have to. I have to. Well, what Stay. do you mean you have to? It's Howard, part of the business, This right? is part of the business, and I have to be really? up every morning at 6 o'clock to kiss him on the forehead, send him to camp during school, send him to school. Wow. I have help at home, uh, you know, and he's very understanding. But when I go home after my 7 o'clock show, I usually well, have to be back nanny? out in the club. Yeah. White woman, black woman? No, she's Hispanic. Hispanic. Yes. Minds her own business, the lovely Mrs. Lopez. All right, very nice. Yes. It's always a touchy area, you know? Yeah. yeah do you can, get the white one? Do you get the black one? Do you get do a black, black one? Yeah, you can't do black. Can do black. Do you do black, and it's like, oh, look at them, all exactly. bougie, all this kind of crap. Really, right. you find that? A lot of jealousy? And yes. Oh, yeah. Well, and you got the drama at home, right? Yeah, yep. yeah. Like, Mrs. Lopez is great. She's been with us the entire time. What's your measurements? <laughs> oh no, it's not. No, no, no. no. She's she, no, no. Oh, no. I'm no, worried about him. None of that. That's uh, that's my wife at uh, home. Listen, yeah, that's uh, Kevin. Nice to meet you, Wendy. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Uh, you it's Howard. nice to meet other people in radio. So you're doing well. Yeah. And we're gonna be back right after these words. Wendy. Oh. How'd it go in there for you guys? Wonderful. You had a good time today. Great. Howard, of course. Yes. This is yeah. like a dream. This. Yes. There is nobody, um, I've already met Oprah, um, but even more so than Oprah, Howard, because it's the same career, this is absolutely the pinnacle of meeting somebody. Yeah, he's a very cool white dude. Very, very <laughs> gracious he was, and um, as you know, in my head, you're the only one who really understands yeah. this. This was huge. Yes. And I forgot to tell him, every time Private Parts comes on, I see it, and there's always several different points where I cry. In really? Where, yes! That's my pain. Many town to town, up and down the dial. You guys didn't hold anything back in there. You were willing to, you know, yeah. really talk about the, you know, very the tough secure. times you've yeah. had. And yeah. Very secure. Now I know you said you're, you know, you're pretty used to talking about that stuff openly. It was in your book and everything. Yeah. But it's got to be weird sometimes in the studio, especially with someone like Howard Stern interviewing you. Well, you know what? Howard is the only one who will turn around and ask the questions that I would ask of people. And I can't take over the interview. You know, um, Howard is a consummate professional. And I didn't mind talking to him about anything. I can't believe he asked about shit on you. Yeah, the the one on the helmet, Kevin. If you want to read more about all that, go get Wendy's Got the Heat, because that's all in that book. <laughs> that they did. That's how they dug this up. That's how they dug up all the stories. But I'm talking about the people that's going to see this shit. The helmet oh, yes. thing is cool. You know, yeah. it's all good. You no. know, we're married, so. Hey, how you doing? Wendy Williams here. It's good to be back, Howard. Thank you so much for the invitation. So I'm here today to promote my Wendy Williams talk show, but um, also to stop by and see you guys. Um, I hope you're not going to be leaving. I know that this is the countdown, 11 days. It's bittersweet. Great, sweet because I'm here and bitter because I don't want this to be the last time and um, hopefully it won't be. Um, otherwise, I have no reason to have serious, honestly. All the talk and all the chatter and you are my, you're my guy. Hi, Robin. My girl. I'm going to miss you guys. Don't go anywhere. Please. Mornings will never be the same. But um, other than, you know, the show, it's just always an honor to see you. You know, just to know you. A big part of my life. Right, I'm not going to get all sappy. Yeah. What is that smell in here? How about it smells horrible in here? <laughs> all right, Wendy Williams has her own talk show on television. And she's very successful. I think she was just renewed through 2012. It gives her two more years on the air, which is pretty good. And she's uh, very outspoken. Let me see how she looks. Oh, look oh, at you, honey. Look at you. Lost a little weight, huh? 
since I last saw. Oh, Thank much you. better. Thank you. I got to say, that's a big improvement. That, excuse me? I mean, you didn't have, your body looks. Hi, Robin. Your body's rocking. Thank you. Wait, don't sit down so quick. I won't. Turn around. Let me look at your ass. <laughs> it's a little something. Thank Face you. looks good, too. What'd you do? That, nothing. No work? No. Honestly. I don't know. But the titties aren't real. That I know. Yeah, well, but Did you look reduce good. them a little? No. It's the black. They look huge on TV. They're, they they I mean, do look big. When my wife was on your oh, show... Man. Your your one titty was bigger than her whole head. Yeah. Man. Do you what? want me to stand up again? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't mind. What kind of old panties are you wearing? Show me. I have on tights. Take, take your clothes off. Let me, Let me see what you're doing. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> My husband is in the other room. Who cares? Howard. If it was just you and I. <laughs> really? I'm, no. Um. You look. Do you look great? Thank you. It's some, a simple wrap dress that I'm wearing. How old are you now? And 46. No kidding. Yep. And today is our 12th wedding anniversary. But do you have a good marriage or not? I can't even tell. It's a good marriage. He's my best friend. But we, didn't he get into like a whole, when you were, didn't you tell me when he, when you were pregnant, yes. he was cheating on you? Yes, oh. Howard. How do you recover from that? I, gently. You know. You, you trust I, him now? Yes. I mean, you know, there's a certain amount of, I'm still, I'm still standing. Should I sit? Do you think you look better because your TV show successful? Like you're feeling good about yourself? I do think I have the glow of success, Howard. Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, in a way, I mean, you really transformed yourself. Thank you. The last time that I saw you, I have a picture of you and I that I have in my very special area at the house. It's oh, very great. small, yes. but it's special. And it's of you and I when I was here before, and my wigs were longer and very blonde and yeah, that whole bit. Too blonde. Yeah, well, there this is... This is good. This is a wig? Yes. Well, and you wear a wig because... Are you bald? <laughs> Someone told me you're bald from, from like a thyroid disease. I do have thyroid, but I'm not bald. But you know what? What do you have oh, under sorry. that wig? Take that wig um, off. Let me see what. <laughs> He's take, really gonna strip take you. Take your clothes off and take off your wig, and let's see. Let's see what we got. Let's you down. Let's be stripped down. Ah. No, you know what? Um, How's your body look naked? I mean, is it is good? It, is there cellulite? No. Are there stretch marks? No. I have some cellulite. I don't have stretch marks, and I my tummy tuck is still sticking. Our son is ten years old. Well, you say you had a tummy tuck? Oh yes. It, 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 but it doesn't that leave a big scar across your stomach? No, my scar did not raise up. It's very flat, and I've got a nice vine of um, tattoo across it. You can, take your clothes off. I, I gotta see <laughs> this. I gotta see it. Come on, don't be uptight. <laughs> What's your big problem? I'm really, you know what? You look I, great. I really am not uptight. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, I I love my body now. Yeah. You know, I get out of the shower. I look at it. Do you plan to lose more weight? You know what? There's nothing wrong with dropping five or ten more pounds. If you, you want the honest truth? If I lost weight, I'd be hot. If you lost 15 more pounds, you'd be done and you would be fucking smoking Yeah, hot. yeah. Then you can tell your husband off about cheating. <laughs> <laughs> no. But what happened? You gained 100 pounds when you were pregnant? I gained 100 pounds. And so what, his eyes straight and uh, he... Well, I couldn't have sex. We were, on, we were on bed rest. Because you were so afraid you'd lose the baby. Yes, for the hundredth time. Right. So You had lost a bunch of pregnancies. Yes. So you were on bed rest the whole time. You wanted that. But now you're probably like, Jesus, what the hell was all the fuss about? Yeah. But, but now, but at that time, you were like, I got to stay in bed. I got to stay in bed. Yeah. You know, I mean, we hadn't planned on getting pregnant, but, you know, all of a sudden we showed up pregnant. So I said, you know what? Now that I know all about this the whole pregnancy thing and what I really want to do, we're going to have a baby. And you put 100 pounds on. Yeah, I weigh 297 pounds. On oh, my God. Day. Yeah. Uh, uh, wow. And so when you talked to your husband about this, you said, oh, what's the matter? You just, he physically could not fuck you and he was not attracted to you. No, it's not right. that he wasn't attracted. Although well, at 300 pounds, probably not. I, I'm not attracted to you at 300 pounds. Yeah. I'm attracted to you now. Yeah. And, you know, it's different um, when you're 300 pounds and you're 5 feet 11 because then you're big. You're like a right. sub zero. You're not like a like a. You're you not know. A feminine. Right. right. The classic feminine. Right. Exactly. Right. And so now I'm about maybe 175. You know. You're my, 175 now. Yeah. How my, tall are you? My five, I'm five eleven. Today I have on flats though because I have a very long day. And so I'm wearing flat shoes. You what do you weigh? One. One seventy five. You got to get down to one forty five. You think one forty five? Oh but that's white God. girl you'll thin be, though. No, Howard. you'll be supermodel thin. No, I. And you got a great face. Thank you, Howard. Honey, you will be smoking Thank hot. Thank you. Although, what's the point? 
I mean, if you're not going to go out and fuck a bunch of guys, maybe you should just stay around 160. But it's nice to be looked at. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So your husband's now not cheating at all. No, he's, he's not cheating at all. But what happened? There was some lawsuit I read about. That some former employee was suing you and your husband that he was... There, was this a sexual harassment yeah. thing? There was a bunch of horribleness that, um, that unfortunately, and I have to give you the, the classic, I can't talk about it's it. It's not over yet. But it, No, it's been over. Oh. It, it's been over. It's settled. It, and the show is on, and the show is doing great, and... And we're still together, and that didn't happen. And um, that was like in my last dark days of being on radio, Howard. Well, oh, that happened on radio. Yeah. Yeah, she accused him of wanting to get set out a hit on Miss Jones, who was your radio rival. I mean, I was like, wow, radio's getting really fierce. They were going to kill each other? Yeah, they were going to kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> you were out of your mind, right? Yeah. I was a part of it also, Howard. But you it's, were. Uh, it's uh, yeah. It's now. It's over. It's over. You and... really wanted to win in the ratings. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> these rivalries get real. All right. <laughs> well, you know what? That 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 was right on the cusp of TV and radio and both going together, and and so there was a lot going on. Uh, so now you trust your husband um, in your personal relationship? And, yes, and Howard. You do. You got past the, the, the cheating thing. Yeah. Did you ever say to him, you know what? I get a free pass now. I can go out and have sex with somebody. I, I don't think that talking about a free pass is, is the, the way people should go. Right. Um, if you're going to do something, then just do it and, and Did you and go get out and get with. revenge sex from him? No, I didn't have to. Really? No. I, no. I know my wife would do that to me. Well, here's She's already told me. She goes, I'll fuck your worst nightmare. You know what I mean? I mean, that's just the Is way she it goes. like, you know, the woman who said she's going to fuck the whole the, the team entire if match. her husband yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She said to me, you will get paid back, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I think you get paid back in other ways, but I think if, if you just... Um, stay on somebody for cheating on you or whatever you're doing, then you're making yourself miserable. Like, I, you know, I don't so have... So you haven't had sex with anyone but your husband is inside of your marriage? In for words, 12 years. For 12 years. You've Actually, been married 12 years. Married 12, together 16, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And for 16 years, you've it's, only had sex with him. It's good regular sex. Even through the cheating thing? Yeah, because I didn't find out about it until, you know, I had already had the baby. And wow. I was 297 pounds. Nobody wanted me at that point. I wasn't even hot. Like, wow. I... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I had to go. I got myself fixed up. I lost weight. Are you I got attracted to other men at all? Ever? Am I attracted to other men? Yeah. Sure. You are. He's attracted to other women also. So I mean, how you know, you worked it through that? We know. I, I think. Do you tell him when you're attracted to another guy? Who's hot? Yeah. Oh yeah. You do. Oh oh yes. Who are you attracted to? You've never you've never banged a white guy, right? No, I can't think. I you know. A white guy's unattractive to you? On no, it's not. That's not it. Um, because you have very white features, you know. Yeah. And you're a light skinned <laughs> black woman. I mean. That's, that's because of these hot French fry lights. Howard. Is that what it is? <laughs> you know what? You're um, lighter than Robin. Robin's pretty light. Robin is a, a nice brown. Yes. Do I look? Um, you look tan. I do. Yeah. Oh. You're not. And also, did you have a nose job? No. You asked me that before. I've been asked that before. Why did you? make your titties so big well i think that they, they look good all right i'll stand up again what cup is that that's like an e cup yeah but look how big i am do you see how big i am so you feel it bounces out your body uh, robin that's exactly what they do you know they do balance you out you have a waistline yes because you have a broad broad shoulders uh, yeah I who, a, di I, who did this to you I, put those breasts that big when you went to the plastic surgeon did he say to you listen honey these are these are pontoons i'm sticking in you no because he saw it was it was a collaboration it was right. me and the doctor my breast implants i got them like in 1993 i've had them changed since then but the same size mm -hmm. just you know you have to rotate them like how many is. actual implants do they stick in there to get them that big <laughs> that's that's more than two Power. Come on, those are huge. <laughs> Howard, in person, really? I know on TV, it's it's my cross to bear. Do you, when you're nude, do you have very big nipples? Um, no, they're nice. And they're believe nice. it or not, they still stand up. They're under the muscle. Wow. So they stand up nice like the first day I got them. I take good care of them. So if you lost a lot more weight, yeah. then those titties might have to come down because you yeah. wouldn't be that big. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't have to balance that out. But I'm not going to lose a lot of Like, I'm a foodie, Howard. Right, right. And if I lost 10 pounds, honestly, it would only be off for about two months. You yeah. know, I would lose the weight for the purpose of, oh, my gosh, we're going to Italy. You and know? how did you and, lose and I the weight? My weight? Do you through. exercise now? Um, I exercise. Um, I exercise and I eat right. I like to count my calories. No, no particular amount per day. Like, there's some days where I might eat 1,000 calories. Other days, it might be 2,800 calories. But I have a pretty active lifestyle. You drink a little wine or you, you're off, you can't drink at all? Oh, no, I like, I like my wine. I thought you were a Cokehead for a while. <laughs> yeah. Gave up wine for Coke? Yeah, but no, weren't you like a Coke? But coke? here's the thing. Weren't you addicted to Coke or something? That was my drug of choice back in the day. Right, right. But you and were a Coke addict. 
Yes, yes, yes. I had a problem. I was the one, you know, out of all of us, we could all be sitting and I would be the one who could not stop until it was finished. I'd be the one paranoid, flipping the blinds. And How long and, ago was this? Um, but gee. Before you were married? Yes. Yes. So were you like a little coke whore? I mean, could I like bang you if I just no, gave you some coke? No, because it was cheap back then. You I know, see. it was cheap and I had a great job. I was on in radio and I had a you know wonderful bachelorette life in Jersey City. I worked in Manhattan. I never uh, didn't show up for work. I was able to function. Um, you were a functioning cokehead. Functioning because I was on radio. Now, if right. I had to put on a suit and, and be a banker or something. Were you wild in other ways? Like were you doing coke and having tons of sex? No, no. It was really? my... It was my Thing. That was your outlet. That that was my that was my friend. Because you cried on your show about Whitney Houston. You you, you yeah. actually came to tears because you said when you saw her on TV, you said on she's Oprah. still in. Yeah, when you saw her on Oprah, uh -huh. you were sad because she was still in denial mm -hmm. about cocaine. Listen, um, a head knows a head, and and you know, unfortunately, when she was on Oprah, I didn't feel as though she took ownership of. She blamed Bobby Brown. Yes, she did. She didn't say, "Hey, I have a problem. I'm going to get rid of this right, problem." Right. Right. And you got sad because she's a great. It's horrible to see somebody self-destruct like that. Exactly. Right. So you had a cocaine <laughs> problem, uh -huh. but how'd you get rid of it? Um, I met Kevin and... Was he an addict too? No, he wasn't. As no. a matter of fact, the furthest thing from me would have kicked my addict behind. Right. You know what I mean? Um, I, and I decided, you know what? I like my life and I like him and I like, I guess, the respect of my family and stuff a lot more than I like this. And you stopped cold turkey? Uh, you know what? You zhuzh down. You know, you go from maybe getting high five days a week to getting high three days a you week. You can do that? To, well, he, you can because now I had this new person in my life and new people in my... You know, when you were always surrounded by people. Like, I was a closet. So your way of getting rid of the addiction was to, like, like Kevin mm. was the guy who... He became your drug, in a sense. No, no, not like that. Right. Uh, but he was like a catalyst. Like, you know, at that particular point, my radio career was going really well. I had never uh, been stopped on the West Side Highway with, you know, a couple of grams in my pocket. I'd right. never been on the Daily News. My mother and father, you know, we come from similar backgrounds. My parents are still, you know, alive and, and, and you know... For them to um, have to, you know, when I sat and I thought about it, I said, my God, I've never been busted. You know, um, I, I got away with I, it. I, yeah, I, I, I got have a away clean with image. Mm -hmm. And now it's time to stop. Mm -hmm. so, so there you was could, no rehab, no. No. Oh. So you could drink wine now and not get, get fall into old habits and you can go out and, and have a couple of shots. Drinks. You oh, can sure. have tequila sure. shots. Sure. But no Coke. Yeah, that, because, because there was nothing else that was my drug of choice. Like when I was. Getting high back then, 15 years ago, whatever it was, to, uh, when I back in that day, it was so distracting to me. I wouldn't even care about drinking something or, or smoking weed or. So if me and you were laying in bed, we're hanging out, we're having a couple of drinks. And I yeah. said, "You come on, baby, let's just do a little bit of coke." You would not do it. Now today, yeah. no, you absolutely would never do not. it. No. I bet you're fun sexually. Yeah. Well, I I do enjoy my. I'm sex. looking at your mouth. <laughs> I bet you like to blow a guy, don't you? I mean, uh, Howard, you know, I'm a full, I'm a well-rounded woman. You are. Robin yeah. has a little problem. Robin... Here we go. What does Robin have to do with this conversation? You are uncomfortable you blowing a man. You don't know anything Robin, about Robin, me. Robin. We've never had sex, so stop it. I think you have <laughs> issues with that. Because yeah, you had to get right. a porno movie to right, learn how to do right, it. Right, 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 yeah. No, I think you're very sexual. I, I, I see you that way. I have fun. And yeah. you know what? Um, life is better sober. And I don't want to be a cornball because if, if I walked in here right now and somebody was getting high, I would just, you know, like walk out. Right. And, you know, But I'm not going to call the cops and all that other kind of stuff. I don't want to blow anybody else's high. But, but you're but you're not sober. You're able to drink. Oh, yeah. And you're able to do some fun but stuff. But you don't have problems. You don't go overboard with those no. things. I have too many responsibilities. All right. Explain to me what's going on with your TV show. This is how many seasons have you gotten under your belt? Um, we're in the middle of right now of uh, the second season of the show. Right. Most and people didn't think it would succeed, right? I know. Right? Yeah. Who is your competition these days? I mean, you, what time are you on in most markets? I'm on at 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, here in New York. Right. Um, for everybody listening, they can go to wendyshow.com to find out in their area. But 10 o'clock in the morning on Channel 5. So who's on ch 10 o'clock in the morning against you in New York? Um, Rachel Ray? or Rachel Ray and Hoda and Kathy Lee. Do you beat them? And we do very well. I mean, we've, we've done well enough to get this second season. You know, right. I really don't, I don't, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of daytime TV. Right. You know, everything from the judge shows to the talk shows. Right. I, like, I, I love them all. And um, went well before I got my own show. So 
I just kind of march to the beat of my own drum. I'm oh, sorry. So huh? you've matured just, in a sense. You're not like when you were back with Miss Jones. Gonna shoot them you're not going to go out and kill <laughs> Rachel Ray or uh, or, or, no. or Hoda and Kathy <laughs> no, Lee. No, here's the thing, and and right. I see I I see people out um, socially. I don't really go out that much because I have to be up early in the morning. Right. You know, and I like to continually get comments, like you said. You know, right. your face looks really good, and in order to do that, you know, um, I need my sleep. What is your schedule? I need what, my. What do you do? You go to bed what time? I like Generally. To have, I like to have my pajamas on before dark. Okay. And then I... Before dark. You're saying 6 o'clock at night. You know, I'm saying like 2 o'clock in the afternoon is perfect for me. Oh, you, you come home from... What time do you tape the show? Um, it's live out of New York at 10 a.m. So we get to the studio every morning about 7.30. Yeah. And um, I get briefed while... I get briefed on the show while I'm getting my hair and makeup done. That's a pretty good deal. And it's different from radio where you had to prepare everything. You walk in oh, and they somebody have has prepared it for produced the, the show. Yeah. It's the best. They say, you're going to interview this person. We're going to do a makeover segment and we're going to do that. Right. It, it, it's great. I mean, I'm one of the executive producers of it. There's three of us. There's right. David Perla. Um, Kevin, my husband, is one of the executive producers and me. And it works perfectly because when I leave to go be Wendy Hunter, who's the one who lives in Jersey gathering the food and stuff, he stays at the studio and is able to, um, in effect, just give me a call. You know, I'm, I'm constantly, you know, answering a telephone call. Do you want this guest? Do you like this person? What do you think do about Do you turn this? down guests? Um, do you get a lot of people who say, I want to be on the show and they're not right for your show? Um, yeah. It's not that we turn people down. It's that sometimes people have to be reworked. You know, like, it, that's not good for now, but the kids are off from school during this time, so maybe that's a great time to have, you know. I see. So you so you don't have to sit there and do all that preparation like in radio because you have a whole oh team. God. It's Howard. a whole. It's easier, isn't it? Howard. It's easier. Yeah. Right. It, but I'll tell you what. I'm glad that it's easier now as opposed to being easier back in the day because I know that I still have it. I know that. that if you had to go back on the radio and do it all right. yourself, you D could do it. One man band. Right. But wouldn't it be a real come down now at this point? Like, let's say the TV show doesn't go on. Well, no. I, you wouldn't want to go back on the radio. Um, not the way it was. Right. But radio um, is my first love. Right. I mean, you know. Um, and uh, I made fun of you because you got so excited uh -huh. about getting into that dumb National Radio Hall of Fame. <laughs> I know. I, I know. I, I, I couldn't. Howard, I'm so sorry. No, but, but I mean, you cried because you got into the Radio Hall of Fame. The, the Radio Hall of Fame is some douchebag in this guy Dumont in, in Chicago. Who's it's, got in it in his, it's in his basement. It's in his basement. You're going you're gonna to be quiet right now. You're going to be quiet. I can't say a thing. But you know what I will say? Yeah. Um, there is no Radio Hall of Fame um, if you're not a part of it. And, Thank you. And, and I've always felt that. I was shocked when they asked me to be part of it because while I do feel as though I Wendy, deserved it. I wouldn't even be part of it. If they ask me, because I know it's it's not even it's not. Who is this guy? You don't know this you guy. Don't even, the guy called in and you started crying. Well, I first of all, I am emotional. Maybe then I was having my period. Right. Also, you know, it's the culmination of like you know, I'm on the set of my TV show. I'm leaving radio. Like, what a poignant time for it to happen. It was going to be in Chicago. I knew. Did my but who is this person who's calling you? Um, Who knows? The, the, he runs the National Radio Hall of Fame. Rush Limbaugh was there. Right. And, uh, well, of course. And Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> He's happy. Come on, you guys. Somebody honored him. So you, where did, you, did you get an award? Did you actually get a plaque it's, of something? It's next to you and me in my special Wendy area at the house. Like, I don't want to have a whole bunch of crap right. symbolizing my career all over the house. And, and um, so it's a, what is it, a plaque? Is it wooden or is it's it? It's glass. It's very modern. It's it's, right. it's not intrusive. And what does it say? It says. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is what I was going to actually bring it for you to see. You should have. I, I would never asked. see one. Um, it's glass, uh, Howard, and it's, it's a pair of headphones right. around the word radio. That sounds nice. And <laughs> <laughs> it does. It says the year and my name, and uh, right next to it are the headphones that I use for about the last decade of my radio career. I see. Um, you know, all bent up. You know, they got your smell on them. And so you have a special area devoted to your radio career, which you're proud of. And the Radio Hall of Fame thing is there. Your headphones that you wore for ten years are there. Yes, Howard. Right. But don't get embarrassed. I'm trying I'm to understand. I'm not embarrassed. But I think you're looking at me like I'm corny, and it's not corny. No, you're I there. No, I save a lot of things for my radio. career. Career now, I am nostalgic as you are. Yes, and I like it. Yes, and so I'm not making fun of it. I, the Radio Hall of fun, Fame thing to me is ridiculous. Well, I want you to take that thing and throw it out. <laughs> 
You had never heard of it before they I called. I had to. Oh, <laughs> yes, I had. What I'm saying is it's a fake award, and I don't want you having a fake award in your little radio area. I don't think you need that. Well. I th- I'm calling on you to take it and send it back to Bruce Dumont. Do I need the on-air light from my college radio station? Because yes. that's there, too. Tim Sabian. Put in a, a plexiglass, my on-air light from K-Rock for 20-something years, and yeah. it sits on my desk. Yeah. What do you think of that? I mean, there, there's... But that's real. Th- but <laughs> and, the, and the award is real, too. It is? You're going <laughs> to stick by the award. <laughs> Look, Howard. Those were real tears, and you are... <laughs> they were real tears. I said to Robin, there's no way those are real tears. <laughs> yes. I, I said, she's the greatest actress ever on the planet. I am a, I'm a good crier. Um, I get emotional about a lot of things. I've had a very, very fortunate you know, life, right. career-wise, as well as family. You know, the love that surrounds me, my mom and my dad, I have a sister and a brother. You know, then I meet this guy, you know. What do your mom and dad do? Well, they're retired now. They what cri- do they used to they do? They criticize. I picture, uh, <laughs> they picture they're school teachers or something. Yes, they were. They were? They were, they were school teachers. And, well, you know, um, back in the day, Howard, there was really no, uh, it was doctor, lawyer, Indian chief, you right. know, back when our parents were younger, particularly as a black, you know, family. Did you grow up in a white neighborhood? Yes, I did. One of four blacks in Ocean Township. I'm from Was the Jersey Shore. Is it tough to grow up in a, an all-white neighborhood and be the only black person? Um, I think it's tough if you if you let it get the best of you. I mean, certainly this thing with kids and bullying. Uh, yeah, I was bullied, except I would never have gone home and talked to my parents about it. Were they you were, called the N-word? Of course. You were? Or, People would come up to you and say N-word? I mean, you know, not regularly, Howard, but there was always that, there was always the um, the black overcast, if, right. if, if you will. Did I, you feel funny going into white people's homes and like going to, like, you know, have to see your friends and stuff? I imagine you had all white friends. Yeah. Did you feel funny going in their house and saying, gee, I'm black, they know I'm black, I feel very self-conscious about no, being black? No, because because my because we lived well. I mean, my parents right. were school teachers and stuff, but we lived in. I grew up in one of the best neighborhoods in the town, and my. I never remember wanting for anything. All the white guys who lived there never had sex with you? Well, I was not who I am today. Like, I had the thoughts and the mouth and everything like that to um, to say it quietly. But now I'm more... Now I am truly... You were the shy. Pers- I, I was, and no white guys try to have sex with you? Um, no, it wasn't like that. I've never been to a prom. Um, right. You know, I just... Were you an ugly duckling? No, I was really actually very cute, but uh, my parents led me to believe that I was very fat. And so therein lies, you know, a 46-year quest to really love myself and just... Why didn't you go to the prom? Because it was all white people and you were like, you felt out of place? No, I didn't have boyfriends like that. You know, I... I, And no white guy would take you to the prom? No, I didn't. I don't want charity. Did you know any black people? Did you ever go to like black neighborhoods and and get get down? Yeah, I friends in Long Branch and, and Asbury. And, Did you feel out of place and, there? Well, they called me white girl. Right. I mean, you know, you know how that is, Robin. Why, because of your speech? Yes. You have perfect English, so to speak. Is that what it is? If, yes. Well, that's what that that is uh, uh, what Robin gets criticized for all the time, that she speaks well. She, she almost gets made fun of for that reason. But I think And that, I would think that was a good thing. Well, that that was a good thing, according to how I was raised, that, you know, you speak well and you'll go a lot further. Um, especially for me, I was never a really good student, but I was I could always talk a jag. But I think that as you grow up as a black person, you, you grow to realize or the people who made fun of you grow to realize. That that's not speaking white, and, and it's what, just speaking English. It's just speaking. That, that's what Robin and I always say. But don't you think that? D- d- did you ever find yourself going to I don't know, like a, a black community, uh-huh. and then sort of fucking your English up so that you sounded you like you can talk black, can't you? Can you talk yeah. black? Oprah <laughs> no. tries. You no. can't talk black. I don't. Um, I. I never thought of being anything but myself. You can't be yo yo yo. What's up? When I do it, it sounds like I'm yo yo yo. It sounds like I'm <laughs> I'm I'm white <laughs> have trying you, to. Have you tried to do that? You didn't do that as a kid. You didn't like when you were hanging with you know the kids in Long Branch. You didn't talk a different way. Yo, what up? No, I didn't. Yeah. I can teach you. And they just called me white girl, and that would be the source of my wanting to be successful. And I'll strange? show them. I'll show them. Mm. Isn't it strange to be insulted and be called white girl? It's almost like a bizarro world. Yeah. You know, it's just so odd. Well, what's even more bizarre is how many people uh, now want to um, befriend me. And, you know, and but I'm, I'm, when you say people who want to befriend you, are you on Facebook? Yes. Do, you, do your friends from high or the people you went to high school with try yes. to friend you? Yes. And these are the people who were not nice to you, people right? People who show up in the audience at the show. But I love it. You know what? Here's the thing. Do you forgive them? Yes. Do you friend them? 
No, I'm like, I don't have time for that. You friend. No, I no, I no, I don't. I mean, I'm I I follow celebrities because I like to know what they're doing, but I'm not all, you know, all in like that. Listen, I'm busy. I got a full life, a full career, a full family, and I need time to sleep and moisturize. What ha- what happens when you take that wig off? I'm wondering. I, I'm finding you very attractive today. Thank you, Howard. But I'm wondering My natural hair, believe it or not, is longer than this hair. And longer than it, that hair. Yes. What color is it's it? It's th- the same colors. It's it's markations of like fall. Like so so why the this, wig? Uh, That's a very good wig. This is a good wig, isn't it? It's a good one. Yeah, I mean, stick yeah. with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I just take them off, though. That's why I won't get weaves. I'll isn't that a lot of work for you? Did you when you go and you, and you sweat and stuff, doesn't that wig get all g- g- gummy? The new technology of wigs are that wigs are light and airy, and they're really the best. And I have to tell you, if I didn't wear wigs... I would have to. I would have a real black girl conundrum in the morning getting ready for the shows because because he, you wouldn't feel pretty. No, no, no. Because he has my hair in the other room. Right. You know, because I don't like all that spray and stuff around me. So. so when you get home tonight, will you take that wig off? Yes. Kevin will see you without the wig. Oh yes. Is he like? Uh, <gasps> no. Uh, <laughs> no. You know what, Kevin? What's wrong with you? Well, I mean, I don't know. She's beautiful. What are I you know. saying? Kevin really. All right. If Kevin has sex with you, do you keep the wig on? No. You take it off. <laughs> <laughs> it gets in the way of everything that I... I mean, you know, depending on how long the wig is. Do you ever do it in the wigs? Sometimes? Yes, yes. He's ever blown a load in the wig. Oh. Because you love those wigs and they're expensive, right? Oh, no. Things have gotten in the wigs. He blew a load in your oh, beautiful yeah. wig? Yes. What's wrong with that man? But, but yeah, I have like... Oh, yeah, I have like a lot of wigs. You're <laughs> <laughs> so silly. But wow. Here's, here's the thing. Um, Wouldn't you be pissed, uh, Robin, if a guy blew a load in your wig? No, they can be <laughs> taken, like she says, to another room and be washed. Oh, I see. And, and besides, Who wants you, that job? But you, but you always have a bunch of wigs. <laughs> right. So, like, no wiggy just has just one wig. Okay, this looks very natural, though. I like thank it. You. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Howard. Yeah, you're really putting yourself together. Are you... Well, I read in the paper that they were saying you had to tone down your hair. That was one of the things they were saying in your show. They wanted you to tone down your look a little bit. No. Yeah, I heard in the paper, Robin brings up a good yeah. point. Yes. They told you on your syndicated talk show, yes. of course, we're talking about the beautiful Wendy Williams show. Weekdays, yes. So check your local listings for your times. Go to wendyshow.com. Mm-hmm. The executive said, look, we're renewing you. Yes. But you got to tone down in a lot of ways. Here's the thing. All right. It wasn't um, hair and makeup. It was more like you're not allowed to show cleavage on daytime TV. Well, the titties you know what? were too out there. Is well, that right? Well, here's the thing. I never noticed it until... I did. I started looking around at other channels. I'm like, oh my God, everybody is really buttoned up. Jeez, I got away with a lot for a long time because I got to <laughs> tell you, I was like a... a oops, but it took away from your credibility. You had such big titties and you were t- wearing such low cleavage that uh, you start... Women don't relate to that. Well, they the get thing. turned off to that. Here's the thing. Right. It was... It was um, then... <sighs> You know, I love pencil skirts. I love the way I dress on the show. Right. You know, it's definitely, you know, Deborah does a great job. We work together. Deborah Madero's Baker is my is mm-hmm. my wardrobe. She did you. Yeah, yeah, she's Kay. great. Right. She's great because she's a woman of a particular age and she gets a St. John's or a pencil skirt. And I love that kind of and stuff. And you want to be sexy. You don't want to look like a frow. I'm not a frumpty dumpty. Right. And I want to be sexy, but I also want to be I want to own 46 and and I love it and I and I want to I want the credibility of being a mom and 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 being you don't botox? a businesswoman. I do a little botox I around it. my I mean, eyes. I mean look at you. You look I don't see a wrinkle on you. Well no, I don't I have very good skin. If I didn't botox you Botox your forehead? Yeah. This is some yeah I mean, they, I mean it's a, it's it, there's not a wrinkle on there. I tune on TV. Nobody's got a wrinkle. No, but, no nobody's face moves. But you're right. not but doing the lower part of the face. I don't do face, the lower yeah. part. This is why I do it because the thyroid is connected to Graves' disease. And I know you know you could say. I well, think you look good. I don't care. I, you look natural. You don't look fake. Yeah, I have pressure behind my eyes, and if I don't do the Botox, then believe me, right now, oh, I yeah, oh, I've been giving oh, you that, that scary. What stare. do you mean you have pressure behind your eyes? It's Graves, Barbara Bush. She's probably the most famous Graves yes. disease. Have you know that thing that she you know that yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. So when you open your eyes, they pop out. <laughs> yes, Howard. So what do you do? You, you 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 how are you keeping that under control? I it's a con- I have to concentrate. You have to keep your eyes almost half shut. Yes, I'm looking at you through the smoke. <laughs> ah. Cameron Matheson, Poor from you. all my children, uses that phrase. Look through the smoke. It's like you yeah. actually have Barbara Bush eyes, but you control it. Yes. Good for you. It's hard. Well, you're doing the right thing. You look pretty. When I get home, all I want to do is take off my hair and open my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Full mess. Wow. <laughs> look at you. What a life. I feel really good, Howard. When they told you to tone down, though, they are saying you have to appeal to who? Middle American moms? Is that the case? 
oh, I don't know. That's what they want. Yeah, no, you know what? That tone down, that was in the TV section of the newspaper. It was like a little blurb right before yes. we came back. And that really did throw a monkey in the wrench for people wondering, you know, was I toned down because I was toned down? No, and I don't really think it's toned down. I mean, I still have the same sense of humor and who better to appeal to middle America than somebody who is middle America? Is I, Oprah I, leaving good for you or bad for you? It's got to be good, right? Um, you know, she's not. She's going to her own network, so there's, there's going to be a whole lot of Oprah so, going on. But that's good that she won't be on, and they'll be looking for people who can do this kind of thing, and you've already got a show. Like Fran Drescher just started a show. I know. She Did started, you check that out? She started with the same company, Debar Mercury, who does me. It's, All right. It's, it's, it's do a, you get upset when you see that? No. Don't you feel like, oh. Oh, now, now another person I have to compete with. No, because you know what, Howard? Uh, you know, I was a leader in radio. Right. And it, it, one of the things that fueled me, and I don't know whether you feel this, the same way, one right. of the things that fuels me is competition. Uh, you know, I, I try my best to run the race with blinders on. Right. And when, at the end of the race, if I look around and I say, oh, my gosh, you know, we're similar or we're so different or whatever, whatever, I... When you were on radio, uh -huh. you were pretty good at making fun of people, too. You made fun of Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Usher, Tyler Perry, People P. make Diddy. fun of me. I've got a sense of humor. But when you got on TV, you had to start booking guests because it is guests-related and it's also guest-centric, these shows. Mm -hmm. So did you have to go apologize to all these people? <laughs> Did you, did you apologize to him? Did you say to P. Diddy? Did you call P. Diddy gay or something? <laughs> what? Did you? Oh, now she doesn't remember anything. Well, wait, <laughs> here, wait, here. Here's some notes I have here. <laughs> Trouble booking certain celebrities because How you used to you trash them really on the good? show. I do? Yeah. I mean, of course I do. I mean, your hair <laughs> is really, and you can get back to that, but I'm just checking you out as you look down and read and stuff. You, you've got really good hair. I know, and I don't color it. Natural. I'm, and I'm 56. Yeah. That's right. Gary's got more gray hair than you. Yep. Gary looks good, though. Gary lost like, it looks he like lost he lost weight. a bunch of weight. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I think I look good, but then I see pictures and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I, I do the same thing. I think yeah. I look terrific in person, yeah. truth be told. And I think that on TV, you something, do look good. something happens with the filter on TV and on and, and, and also cameras. Cameras and pictures. I think you'd bang me yeah. if you weren't married and, and I wasn't married. I mean, I think you would. I think I could probably say to you, hey, come I, on over and let's do some. Let's uh, let's have some fun. Get a I couple mean, of drinks. You know, and let's, let's see what. <laughs> let's, let's get crazy. Let's, let's get crazy. Let me see the titties and everything else. Well, you know how. I think you would. I think that you made a fine choice in Beth. She's a really uh, I love nice her. woman. She's great. And I also anticipate Beth announcing that she's going to be pregnant soon. Um, no. And I Are think, you crazy? Uh, yes, I think you'll I'm too old to be chasing little kids around. I mean, come on. I, I got to tell you something. The it's older my kid gets, the, the more I love it. Like a lot, there are <laughs> right. mothers who say, oh, I missed those years. Are you kidding me? At 10, he microwaves his own food. Can I, can I rest? I tell you the truth. If I was making love to you, though, I'd want the wig left on. I'll be honest. I don't want to take the wig off. Well, what well, do how I need do you that know for? What she looks like with her regular hair. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I, I, she must not think it looks so good. No, no it's a, a matter of having to do your hair all the time. She said she was losing hair. No, I mean, I see patches in there. That. Bald it's, it's patches. Thin. I don't want <laughs> There's that. There's no bald patches. Right. And it's thin. It's naturally thin, but also the thyroid disease. And I will say, if I was, and no disrespect to school teachers and libraries, but if I was a school teacher or a librarian, my, my own hair would be fine. Well, you know, it'd be fine. But I'm a showgirl. Not I'm not, just exactly. Doing show. I'm not the people in sex. Hollywood are doing something. Come on, let's be I am, serious. I'm not having sex girl. with a bald Barbara Bush. Every glamour girl I want is hair doing something. And, and I wanted to squint. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm on top of you would have done Sinead O'Connor. I would have. I don't know. That's a tough one. You would have done it. Does she have Barbara Bush eyes at Sinead O'Connor? No, you're, doing, you're looking good. You've, you got nice teeth. Thank I like the you. whole thing. Thank you. Your parents put money into braces, I bet. Yes, they yeah. did. And every single tooth is natural in my head. And I covered them. Is that right? Them. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, that's terrific. I obsess that's over like my It's like my Robin. And I heard you, Robin, talking earlier. The girl called about your silver fillings. I got my silvers taken out really? um, um, years ago. So now when I smile and throw my head back and laugh. You can't see. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I feel so free because I can <laughs> I can laugh ignorant. Yeah, I don't see any uh, no, no, no white or no. silver fillings. It's like, it's like silver a young girl. Like are a gone. Young, yeah. So listen to me. You're okay. doing well. What happened with it? Real quick, real story. Omarosa, you hated her. You hate Omarosa. Do you still hate her? No, I don't hate I her. I heard you made up with her, but she, you, you were t saying you were calling her a bitch and a hoe. And you a, two got into it. Yeah, yeah, well, no, she came on the show, and that was during the six-week sneak peek. She's since been back. And, oh, she has? Well, she had that dating show with Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and right. so she came to promote that, except while 
waiting for the results of that show, she fell in love with the guy from the Green Mile. Right. And so now she's pregnant. She is? With I the guy know. from the Green Miles, baby. Oh, wow. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. What, what's that guy's name? Uh, Michael Clark Duncan. Uh, Duncan. <laughs> no kidding. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, all right. So so there's no story there. Yeah, there's really no story anywhere other, other, where, other than, you know, you guys, you know, thank you you know, for having me here. I watched the show. It's the Wendy Williams show. I'm having the time of my life. Right. I don't One know how question, long it's though, going to When you like- had Larry King sitting there. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You didn't ask about what was going on in the tabloids. Come on, you got to. Here's the thing. Yeah, Wendy, that's not, but she's got to get guests, I guess. <laughs> See, yeah. uh, there's a, there's a fine. But Larry <laughs> King, you got to You got to walk a line, but this is, this is what I got from yeah. him. Because was, it was his birthday that day. And uh-huh. so my round the way of asking about it was to say, so what are you doing for your birthday? Right. And he says, well, right after I leave the set here, I'm flying back to Beverly Hills to be with my family. And we showed a picture of um, <laughs> Sean and the two boys, right. you know, there in a picture. And I said, that's a beautiful family. You know, I read the tabloids, Larry. You know, things weren't going down so nicely. Now, no, I didn't ask about, you know, his sister. So what did he say to that? He, he said uh, uh. he made a Viagra joke right. and uh, a, a little sex joke, and then that was it. So he answered, but he didn't You know, answer. Wendy, it's my 116th birthday. <laughs> I never I, thought I'd see the day. I asked him I asked him about Ryan Seacrest and Pierce and things yeah, like but that. Please, but isn't it great? His wife, she was on here. We tried to give her a lie detector test because oh. she said that there's no way that she was having sex with that coach kid, but meanwhile she was. She never showed up and then Larry, to take the test. Larry's being accused of fucking her sister. I mean, yeah. my God, what yeah. a Show. You must See, that would have been the family picture to show. Yeah. The, the wife, the I would sister-in-law. Have, I would have photoshopped in the sister-in-law <laughs> yeah, and the coach. <laughs> I go, hey, hey, Larry. That's who, a beautiful family. What's going on here? I mean, don't you want to just say, Wendy, don't you want to just say to Larry, Larry, you look like a snail. No. I mean, you're with this no, young Larry. woman, and this is like your 18th marriage. No, Larry, and no. Jesus Christ, and, and, and what, you think you're a ladies' man and you can fuck her sister? I mean, didn't you just want to say that? Yes. But then the Radio uh, Hall of Fame would have gone away. <laughs> you should have marched out Larry's first six wives. <laughs> Let me produce that show. Well, uh, did Larry come on to you at all? Um, Let me feel your ass. He seemed to really like me. Right. Um, <laughs> I and, bet. And my husband said that he seemed to really like me. Like, yeah. like you know, uh, because he, you know, he observes things like that. When I'm in the moment, honest to God, I'm right. really in the moment. Right. But one thing that... I don't mind being is a little sexy. You know, I like right. to get a little side look. I could you see know, Larry from, wanting you. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. He, might have. he invited me out to his uh, farewell party. Of course. Uh, uh, Listen, <laughs> Wendy. Yeah. I want to finish in your wig. <laughs> what is that, Larry? I want to come in your wig. <laughs> you know, uh, it, but it's it's fun meeting all kinds of different people. But, and right. as you said. Listen, we don't know how long the TV show will go. You're renewed through what? 2012? Yes. I wish you a lot of luck. You know that. Oh my God, the best, the best. Wendy, as, as, as someone who's done radio and is in a talk show format, what makes that such a great interview? <sighs> because I can't, I'm offended by very little, and he's just the guy asking the questions that most people want answers to, and uh, because I've already been here before, it. It, it felt like coming back to see old friends. And because I've listened for decades, you know, um, right up to this morning, with them teasing Gary relentlessly about that pitch again, which, by the way, Gary, I threw out the first pitch and got it over the plate at the, with the Baltimore Orioles. But, um, and then I was listening to Robin with the fillings this morning. I mean, it's always fun coming here because it's, it's, it's real radio and it's not stopped by music and, you know. Is it odd being on the other side of it as being someone who usually is doing the interview? I hate being interviewed. But with Howard, it's different. You know, he he doesn't really have an agenda. He's, he's just Howard. Um, you can take those same questions and give them to somebody else. And I might, you know, definitely be offended and wonder, you know, why the hell are you asking me that or whatever. And I got through the whole thing without cursing. I've always thought that cursing on the radio is overrated. And... Um, I didn't even think about cursing while I was in there. It just it even wasn't. Even though you had the freedom to do. Yeah, yeah, even though I had the freedom, I didn't think about cursing. Yeah. But still a good time. He's the only one who can really get away with asking you about, uh, you know, dropping loads and wigs and things. Like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's Howard. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. So hopefully he stays and we'll see you again soon. Yes, definitely. Stay, Howard, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much. All right, good luck to you, Wendy. Hi, Wendy Williams, back to see Howard. <laughs> I'm here to promote my new book, Ask Wendy, and, uh, and you know, chop it up with Howard, see what's all going on. There's no nerves anymore, I don't think, when it comes to you and Howard, because you've, you've done the show a few times now. Yeah, this is my third time. You're in the comfort zone. Oh, yes, yeah. But still expecting the unexpected? Yeah. So you'll do all right today? I think so. All right. <laughs> we'll see you in the studio, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Wendy Williams is here. Uh, she has a talk show and a new book out. And uh, Wendy's talk show is doing really well. It's up 43%. Which is How pretty... come you haven't ever done the show? I don't know. I'm probably too big for that show. Oh. Right. Hey, you look good, honey. Look at you. Did you lose a little weight? A lot of weight. Yeah. She's been slimming down. That walk you put on, is that a, an affect? I mean, you kind of shimmy into a room. I like to shimmy. You lost a lot of weight, honey. I lost about 20 pounds. Good for you. What are you weighing now? Thank you. 175. Back to my fighting weight. Now, when you say 175, that's because you're about, how tall are you? I'm 5'11", but I have on five-inch heels today, so I'm 6'5". Louboutins. Yes. Yeah, look at you. I love a big shoe. Is that uh, what you're spending your money on, mostly clothes? Oh, no. You're, you've got to be raking in the dough. Yeah. And if you are, right? Yeah. Because if you're not. I mean, no, 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 I'm not raking in the dough, but yeah, I'm doing okay. But no, you okay. know, I got a show, so they, they buy me stuff. Are, oh, they buy the clothes for you? No. Mm. Who dresses you for your show? Um, Memsor. Memsor? That's my stylist. Memsor is a stylist? Yes. Who's that? He's a it's one a person's name. <laughs> Memsor. Thank you, Robin. Hello. Memsor <laughs> sounds like he's from Krypton. He's, he's from Africa. He's a yeah. one man band. He's fabulous. And he drips me in sheath dresses and pencil skirts. And yeah, you look good on shoes. that show. Yeah. Thank you. And why'd you lose the 20 pounds? You felt you were getting a little porky? Well, you know what, Howard? Uh, this summer I turned 49. Right. Last summer I said, okay, I'm about to be 48. Uh, I hear 50 practically kills people in terms of how they feel about themselves sometimes. Right. I said, it's not going to be me. I've never felt bad at a birthday, 25, 30, 35. You don't 40. have any wrinkles. I'll give you that. Thank you. Are you Botoxing at all? No, you're no. You're not doing anything. Everything is out. I don't mind Botoxing, but I just don't. Who has time all the time? So you're not Botoxing and you've never had a facelift? Never. Uh, why? You know black don't th crack, Thank you. Oh, <laughs> yes, it does. Robin. <laughs> Robin. That's all bullshit. <laughs> we, we've seen some bad blacks. I've seen some really? cracked blacks. Yes, me yes, too. I have. Okay. No, but you really do. You're aging very, very Thank well. Thank you, Howard. Are you angry that your big success, yes. your TV success, happened, I'm, I'm going to say, later in life? Like, you weren't that well-known. I know you did radio for yeah. a bunch of years, but it took you a while to catch on. Yeah. And then you got into uh, television. Yeah. And I guess, in a way, your success is relatively late in life, right? I was just telling Baba Booey um, out there. He was asking me. He said, well, who are your friends? And I said, well, thank God all of this happened for me later in life when I'm extremely grounded and I know who I am. I know who my people are. It works in it works for me. For some people they would say I'm creepy and guarded. For me, I like being creepy and guarded. So you're saying you don't have a lot of friends? I'm saying that the success that's happened late in life has um like I don't overspend and I don't overfriend and I don't overdo anything. If anything, I hunker down and really look at life like, you know, I'm sober, my kid is twelve, I, you know, it's all good. Are some celebrities anxious to be your friend now that your show is a hit? Yes. They are. They approach you, they want to hang out. So what would be wrong if you had a celebrity friend? There's that, nothing wrong with it. There's you just don't have time for it? it, it listen, I, there I know people. I know people if I wanted to go have, you know, a sandwich and a and a white wine for lunch, I know people who, you know, should Sure, come on, let's go. Right. And I do get invited to do things, and sometimes I do things and sometimes I don't, but I, the core of who I am yeah. is uh, not... Who you've always been. Yeah, exactly, and it's not this life. I, I see I see. Excuse me. I see it for what it is, and it's a wonderful, great life, but I'm playing catch-up now with other aspects of my career, and I have very little time you know, to mess around. Are you making mm -hmm. Oprah's type money because your show is a hit? It's been on what seven seasons now, or eight? This is we're in our fourth season. We just oh. got renewed uh, for season five, six, and seven. And wait, six. anyway, through two thousand seventeen. Wow! Oh, yeah. wonderful! That's a big commitment. So did that mean a new contract? It just got the renewal about uh, two weeks ago, about a week and a half ago. So a renewal meant a new negotiation, right? Uh, listen, the, the business is being taken care of, but the whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a second. You, you, in other words, your contract ran out. Howard. 
Did your contract run out? No, I'm still in. Uh, Howard! Why? Why is that a bad thing? Let's celebrate this. We, we Your show is in syndication like Oprah's yeah, was. Yeah, You have a big audience. Mm-hmm. You're on the mostly the Fox network, right? Um, on Fox mostly, but I'm on other networks too, and we're in 52 countries. And the show is doing well, but I mean, it's taken all this time. So why are you not to, getting Oprah-style to... money? <laughs> why are you not? I am not Oprah. <laughs> no, seriously. Why, forget our Oprah. Why are you not getting that kind of syndicated money? I imagine Ellen DeGeneres gets good money. from from, But that's not Oprah money. That's good money. Say, that's not Oprah money. It isn't? Ellen DeGeneres doesn't get Oprah money? Well, Oprah's a billionaire. I don't know. Is Ellen, I don't follow the billionaires. You. Are you a billionaire? Wait a second. No. When you... Exactly. When you... <laughs> but wait a second. When you go into a contract negotiation... Yes. You have to look at what did Oprah get from King World. You have to look at what Ellen DeGeneres is making, what Rosie everything's O'Donnell taken, made. Everything's being taken into account. Believe me, you. But I may, must say this to you. After this three, because we're in season four right now, it has taken four seasons for me to, for instance, write my my first book since being in TV. This is right. my sixth book. Um, it has taken four seasons for me to finally get my wig line up and going. We're putting the finishing touches on Wendy but forget Williams' that. I'm world. talking about the TV business. Forget the wigs. Forget the, the books. I forget understand. all the other stuff. Everything, everything takes a beat, and, and I'm not starving. So you went in and I'm had not a, starving. So no. you, went in, you went in and had to make a <laughs> and contract. And I'm not homeless. You had to make a contract negotiation, <laughs> yeah. okay? In other words, they wanted to sign you up for three more years. Mm-hmm. You're really in the driver's seat in that situation, aren't you? You could say. Because guys like David Letterman and Jay Leno, I'm talking about the business of broadcasting now. Guys like David Letterman and Jay Leno work for a network. They get a paycheck, even though it's a healthy one. Yes. When you're in syndication, you own your own program. Uh, You could say I'm in the catbird seat. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Do you want to celebrate? (laughs) I wonder what you're earning. It has to be big. I do okay, Howard. Are you still in the same house? Have you bought a bigger house? No. Because uh, why? We, you you have a hang up with money. You will I, not spend a no, dime. No, 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 no. Uh, I live a luxurious life. I mean, yeah. I, I live a luxurious life, but I don't have uh, to live in a house more than what me and the Kevins need. And I don't have to. Um, hmm. My The years of Negroidian expenditures are virtually over. Uh, what? Uh, what kind of expenditures? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Negroidian? What, are that? What, is, what is that? You know how sometimes oh my. me and my the people, bling. yes, <laughs> me and my people tend to do things so, when we start making it. You and, talk about cars and bling. <laughs> cars and bling and things like that. I mean, we always had nice cars and I haven't bought any new diamonds, I don't think, since I've had this TV show. But you you're, know, you're, I, in other words, you're frugal, you watch your money. Yes, you know Howard. What I, it's smart, yes. of course. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to understand. Yes, yes, I'm telling you. Right. I'm telling I, I. Why do you have to have a wig line and... Uh, <laughs> I know you like to wear wigs. Yes. All right. And they look great. Thank you. And you're known for that. But why do you need that? In other words, you are now hitting it big with your On show. TV. Yeah. yeah. You don't need a wig line. It Maybe in some ways it even cheapens, cheapens you. What do you think? Well, I here, here's what I will tell you. Go ahead. I do. I only want to do outside projects that speak to my heart implicitly. Okay. If I say Coke, you will not see me drinking Pepsi. That's just a little example. I wear wigs because I have thyroid disease and my hair has thinned terribly. It's very long, but it's very thin. So I wear for a reason. And every single day, at least 10 people say, Where's the line? Where's the line? It's taken me all these years to finally say, you know what? It's time to now get in bed with a company, start feeling products, and really get this thing going. So if you were to take off your wig now, what would I see? Would I see hair, or are you compl- is your head shaved? Oh, no, no, no. It's not shaved. It's just thin hair? <laughs> Shut up, Howard. No, what is it? Is if it you watch Dancing with t- the Stars, yeah. you saw her real hair. Where? Where? Didn't you have when you were practicing? Oh, you didn't no. wear a wig. Oh, she yes. Did. Yeah. Oh, she you're just, kidding. That was a wig. She wore a wig that like looked like she was working she out. She wore a wig. wig that looked like she was working out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was my Dancing with the Stars <laughs> practice wig. There's a wig oh for my every. God. Yeah, sure, Robin. There's a wig for every occasion. And now, when you wear a wig, yes, and you want to go swimming, yes. Is it annoying because you want to just get the, you want to feel the water in your hair? Yeah. And you, you know what I mean? It's like wearing a bathing cap in a sense. No, because when I swim now, um, I'm not dipping and diving and, and jumping all around. I got on a two-piece. Right. And it's a little triangle. 
I, like I don't want my bathing suit falling off. I don't want uh, my hair fall. But I do put my head under the water. You do. Oh yes. And 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 when you wear these wigs, yes. I mean, isn't it like walking around all day like a, like wearing a hat? Like, aren't you just annoyed by it? And, and no. Like, will you wear the wig at home? Like, if your husband sees you, the you want to be uh, glamorous. Like, when do you take it off? Yeah. Well, yeah. As soon as I walk in the door, I take it off and drop it on the floor. It's like pick you it take it off your shoes. It's, yes, it's like yeah. taking off shoes. Yeah. And, and did your husband go? Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Wendy Williams. Yeah, right. What happened to that I married that glamorous woman. <laughs> well, why not keep it on for him? Why does he have to uh, uh, put up with that? But it's, but I I have a relatively attractive face and physique. So I think he, so. Thank you, Howard. Yeah. Um, and the hair that I have is not bad hair. It's just that there's not enough Take of it for a show girl so like I can, me. Let me see. I, I would <laughs> never do that stuff. Not even for not even for sweets. Not even for anything. Do you ever answer the door accidentally, forgetting that your wig isn't on, and then you say, "Oh." oh. I should have worn you my know, wig. You know what? Yeah. Um, I actually have once or twice. But here's the thing. <laughs> to the naked eye, you wouldn't know the difference because no. I I put my hair up in like a top knot, like a, you like know, a bun. yeah, like yeah. a bun thing. Yeah. And it's like a messy Wendy around the house bun. And I have a rule with my son, um, which is, you know, and his friends, you know, you come over once, wig is on. Come over twice, wig is on. By the third time, okay, wig is off. What I like about your show, your TV show, uh -huh. is is that when you do your hot topics and things, yeah, you, I love that. you talk by yourself. In other words, you don't have a group of uh, cackling women around you yes. who sit there and constantly uh, <laughs> you know, talk and, and, and everyone's yelling and screaming and all that. It's just you. It's just you. I think that's your advantage right there. Thank you. You know what I mean? You don't need, because you're a radio person, I feel, you don't need all well, of Well, you get it. You yeah. know our radio training has got us, uh, not, not all of us. All of us don't make it on TV. Right. But my, my training, my experience in radio has definitely given me, I think, personally an advantage. You know, hot topics used to only be eight or ten minutes. When we moved, uh, we moved, this is season four right now, you know, we moved the studio, right. we, you know, more bells and whistles, and they said, what different about the show? So now we're going a full 20 minutes of hot topics yeah, before we even go into the first commercial, which I love. When you sit and talk and you do your monologue, it's yeah. very good. It's like I like to hear just what your thoughts are on uh, uh, on whatever's going on. Yeah. Although well, that's the thing. I'll sometimes, when something's going on, I'll say, I wonder what Wendy's saying about this. Why did you and say, I'll tune in. Why did you say, uh, Beyonce, you were critical of Beyonce? So you said she speaks like she's in fifth grade. Oh well, what was I that? I think all that would about? be it's a sixth grade education, and I have closed captioning on one of the TVs in our kitchen. Right. So <laughs> what was that all about? Is, I've never heard her speak. Is, is she does she speak poorly? Um, she needs per, she, she grammar. Could stand an elocution lesson or. 10. Is it she the needs grammar? some finishing. Yes, a little fi a little polishing. Yes, I mean for, for for such a beautiful woman and such a talented woman, and to be at the forefront of music everywhere, pop, R and B, whatever, it would be nice if she was able to speak eloquently. Better. Listen, you don't have to speak the king's English, right? None of us do. None of us do. But you're saying she's a complete fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> Howard? Oh, is that what you're saying? Howard? I mean, you're being critical. She I... was being more eloquent than that. <laughs> but you're not afraid to be critical of people. I... Otherwise, you wouldn't have a show. Yeah. You're like kind of in my boat that you have to speak your mind and say some things that people might not want to hear, but they're thinking. It's not that you have to. I was born this way. I don't know about you. I think that you and I have a lot in common, yeah. you know, it, a, a lot in common, more than, than maybe even you know. Uh, um, I was born this way, Howard. It, you know, the same thing that used to give me dents in my shins from my parents kicking me under the table is now the very same thing that uh, is that being, you're being celebrated. Rewarded for, exactly. Yeah. You said that uh, Jessica Beale, who just married Justin Timberlake, <laughs> you said the marriage will not last because she's boring. Now. Uh, that's pretty harsh, right? I mean, uh, she's probably excited. She probably watches your show. She's a big fan, I bet. And then all of a sudden you blast her and say, your marriage won't last because you're boring. Do you sincerely believe that, or are you just going for ratings when you say that? Um, I believe she's boring. Now, yeah. as to whether How or do you not know that she's boring? Well, I don't. I, I oh. don't know factually, but I know from, you know, following her career, right. seeing her stand... <laughs> you know, <laughs> a very beautiful woman, right. a very beautiful woman. I will not take that away. It's 
just that she, they're like, I could never picture her dancing to a JT song. I right. mean, like, really doing it. Like, just. So why do you think he married her, then? I don't know. He wanted pretty kids. Maybe that's it. Uh, maybe he likes a boring girl. Maybe. Maybe there's, <laughs> you know, sometimes there's so much action going on in the world, you want somebody opposite of that when you go home. How long will the marriage last? I don't know. You don't know that? I don't know. It's finally a topic you don't know. After the first about. child. You also predict uh -oh. that Kim Kardashian will be a single mother 30 seconds after the baby is born, that Kanye West will abandon her and her baby 30 seconds after the baby's born. Don't you think 30 seconds is too long? <laughs> I think he's abandoned her now. I'm I trying think to he's tell gone. You. That's right. <laughs> but but uh, why are you so sure he'll last 30 seconds? That's the question. But what do you really think is going to happen there? You really think that he's going to... Uh, I'll tell you what, Howard. Yeah. This is one of the reasons that um, when we came back for, you know, when we started the new season in right. September, I said, mm-mm. We are not taking three months off next year. First of all, I love being in the studio. When I'm on that set, I am in my utopia, and we've got to work to see this baby born so we can chit-chat. So you really <laughs> do love working. I love what I'm doing right now. You love the TV show. Yes. Because you could have taken the summer off. Yes. And you chose to work this summer. Mm -hmm. Is that because you're afraid to leave, the audience will forget about you, or it's just that you just have nothing better to do? You just would rather do that? No, I, I have um, a life, a full life right. outside of the show, but... Um, you know, everybody doesn't get a chance to have their own talk show and sit in the middle of the stage in a purple chair by themselves and be, you know, graced with four seasons and now, you know, so many more afterwards. Um, I love doing it and uh, I did not want to have... It's not a burden for you. No, and I did not want to have three months off. Like, what am I going to do? How many trips around the world... You don't know how to be off? I do know how to be off because when, I'm, when I do have my downtime, I have it. I mean, I got a mom cave set up at the house, you know. I'll tell you, and, you why know, I A bunch think, of robes and... I think you enjoy working. I do. Because you're not one of those neurotic people that worries about ratings and worries about what everyone else thinks. That you're just doing the show for yourself. And if the chips fall where everyone loves it, that's great. And if they don't... Well, so be it. How do you know that? Because that is true. They come in with the ratings, and I hear with a half an ear. Ba 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 ba. Because only the reason I disp I can't stand what I do is because I'm so ratings conscious and so worried about what other people think. The people who truly enjoy their work are healthy, and are they, you still seeing a shrink? Of course. Yeah. It'll never, it'll never stop. Yeah, the, that guy will never crack the case. Is that what? No, you're, <laughs> you're the type of person. I, I understand this. Do that, you envy her? Absolutely, because if you can really just come in and do a show for yourself yeah. and say, "Hey, I did a good job," and if people don't like it, they don't like it. You'll be happy at work. I'm very hard on myself, though. Uh, you know. Um, when I do get a bit of criticism from whichever way it comes, I'm not talking about um, Wendy Watchers as much as I'm talking about my deep inside uh, core um, values. No, no, the, you know, staffers and, and, and oh. you know, so on and so forth. If Kevin comes to me with something, you know, I, I'm hard on myself. I am my worst critic. But I have to tell you, um, that is also how I ran my radio show. I mean, ratings are very, very important. Yes. But I don't like to read my own headlines. You come in and you tell me I'm number one. I hear it for 30 seconds. By the time I'm in the car at the end of the day, it's like, okay, damn it. How, how... I'm just, you know, back to the to the drawing board or whatever. How do right. I stay here? What do I do? If I think about it too much, then I'm going to overthink it. I'm going to lose the magic of whatever makes Wendy Wendy, whatever makes people listen or watch right, or whatever. Right. So no, it's I, a strange business because you really don't know why people listen. You don't. Some you, of the best shows ever have been canceled. Right. Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating, Howard. Uh, yeah, I, I I think so. But I, I like that you you enjoy your work. So now you're 49 years old. I'll are be 49 you, in uh, on July. Are 18th. you freaking out about aging at all? No. You don't care. No. I feel 49, but I feel very 18. I have a very very uh, happy life. You're still with that husband. He's outside. That husband. <laughs> that, that husband. The manager. Yes. The husband manager. Yeah. 
How do you feel about that, really, about your husband being your manager? I love it. You do? I mean, we have choices. It didn't have to be that way. I didn't need him as my manager. He right. he came into my life. He had his own thing going on. He had a, a, a salon and, you know, his own uh, thing. And we've been married for 15 years, but it was 19 years ago he came into my life. Right. And Now, uh, the new book you wrote, you bring up again Wendy. that he cheated on you while you were pregnant. Yes. You bring it up again. Did he say to you at one point, your husband, I know your husband, he's a nice guy, but did he say to you, enough, Wendy, let's stop talking about that. It's embarrassing to me. No, uh, no, he didn't say that. The Ask Wendy book is comprised of letters from Wendy watchers from all around the country. Right. So they've written me letters, and the book is divided into chapters. So the in between the sheets drama chapter uh, is where, uh, and also the man drama chapter is where people are asking about sex and or infidelity and or how do I keep things spicy or whatever. So, you know, it, listen, Howard, if you were to tell me when I was 25 years old, a nice girl from a nice background, a good education on my way with a big career, that I would stay with a cheater, I would say, oh, hell no. But the well, reason, your whole background, yeah, the reason... The reason that I draw on my own experiences, that's just one of many, is because to kind of show... By example, how things can work or not work. Like, I don't believe in screwing around at the workplace. I believe coworkers are coworkers, and there there should be no effing going well, on. Well, it, sometimes it happens. But when, when, when Spitzer's wife uh, stays with him, the, yeah. the governor who, you know, yeah. who uh, was with hookers, yeah. when Anthony Weiner's wife stays with him, you understand, right? You, you're not the wife that leaves. You stayed. Um, you know what? Everybody's situation is different. Right. You know what I mean? I, you know, I... When you fight with your husband, do you still bring up, you fucking cheated no, on me. You never no. do. Part of staying is that you don't bring things like that up. You're not busy running telephones and searching in pockets and counting mileage on cars. I mean, you drive yourself crazy right. with that. If you stay, you have to leave it alone. And this is what I talk about in the book with people. It's one of many, you know, examples that, you know, I gave. You know, there's a body image chapter where, you know, I've grappled with my body image for so many years. I mean, I guess, you know, on one hand, it never stops. because You I'm grappled with your body image yes. because your parents would sit there and tell you you were fat. Fat, so you got a pretty face if you just lose some weight. And they would monitor what you ate and while, uh, did you have a brother? Yes. And he would get to eat whatever Everything. he wanted and you were put on strict portion right. control. Right, and my older sister also, you know, um, Wanda. Uh, yes, they, you know, my whole family would get Are you on angry me. with your parents for that? I'm not angry with them anymore. But you were. Yes, and I will bring it up whenever I need to, and it makes me angry, just like I'm talking right Is now. Is there any way that maybe that was a loving thing? They were concerned about you uh, looking good, but also having good health? And, no, uh, it, no. Wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It was a vanity thing. Right. Kids, they wanted parents you... don't want Good-looking parents don't want fat kids. So, in other words, their ego was involved uh, yeah. in this. Yeah, oh, please, come on. Yeah. Come did, on. You, did you ever confront them on this? Have I? Have you? <laughs> Several times. I bring, listen, listen to that mouth. <laughs> this, 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 is another, this is another one of those situations where I'm bringing it up again. You know, I was like, Are you on good terms with your parents? Were there years that you weren't? Oh, no. I'm on good terms with them. What I about years been. ago? No, I... Uh, you know, but you went through a period of hating them. Not hating them, but um, not giving... A, a damn about what they had to say about my body like you know uh, and I and I still don't to this day my mother my skirts used to be too short now all of a sudden because I'm doing it on the set in front of millions of people all of a sudden short skirts are where it's at right. the wig wearing was something w Wendy what are you doing your hair is beautiful you don't need a wig now all of a sudden you know oh my gosh Wendy your wigs are beautiful my but isn't that a nice uh, thing for your mother to say your hair is beautiful yes. you don't need a wig yes but so why are you angry about that well the valid a lot of my parents validation for me has only come since With this talk th no since this talk show because you have to understand Howard right. Radio Wendy was oh my gosh she's embarrassing our family right. do you hear what she's talking about because you were too outrageous oh police yeah now all of a sudden the same behavior just honed down into one hour show in front of millions of people with a good wig and sensible shoes and pencil skirt they love it is acceptable so do they come over now and they're carrying on and, and, and Howard, with the friends I have given them a new life and they <laughs> what do you mean a new life well because they're retired they're old like your parents my right. mom and dad they're retired they live in Miami. Right. My dad is 83 years old. My mom is 79 years old. Beautiful couple. And Sexy. what do you mean you gave them a new life? Well, they were retired, sitting around. I mean, yes, they're still involved with their sororities and fraternities and very, very socially active. Right. But this is just giving them another, you know, cue to just get out there and 
you know, always with my mother with the lipstick, and every time she leaves the house, it's like an appearance. So now she's Wendy Williams' mother. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It's and, all about that. Yes, and how you doing rolls off their lips as opposed to in the back in the day. How you doing? So do they, so now when they call, do you feel a sense of like, oh, now you care about me? I'm 49 fucking years old. When I was 20, I could have used this. Howard, get out of my head, right. but keep talking. So you're angry. Oh! Not Are you seeing a psychiatrist about this? No. Seems to me you're angry. No. You're no. resentful. Howard, Why not? Howard, you're the crazy one here. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I mean, I am, but so are you. <laughs> um, we're all crazy in our own way, but no, I don't. I don't see a shrink for it. I am not angry at my parents. I am glad, thank God, that they lived long enough to see my swan song. They right. lived long enough to see me be uh, their daughter, who's you know, I very much you know, my moral compass, my base is definitely. I am their daughter. Is your mother critical of your husband because he cheated? No. She doesn't bring that up? No. She doesn't She doesn't dare piss you off now because she's Wendy Williams' mom. No, 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 no. She didn't do that even before I got right. on TV. Like, she blamed you? No. Why? Because I was pregnant? That's right. You no. let yourself go. No. My, <laughs> I, I did gain 103 pounds. I was That's 297 right. Who pounds. Who can blame poor Kevin? No, isn't it true? Let's be fair to him. Yes. Not, not that you can ever, ever uh, 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 say that cheating would be a good thing. Yes. But um, you had taken him off sex completely. I had to. I had a, a messed up cervix. I, I had a cerclage. What do you mean you had a messed up cervix? I had a cerclage. You know, like if a I, cerclage? Uh, yeah, it holds the baby in yeah. so it doesn't fall out. I had two five-month miscarriages. So that's a full baby. Right. I mean, that just did like a number on us. And <clears throat> so the doctor said, don't have sex while you're pregnant and stay on bed rest and they put the microphone in the house my my general manager at the time acted like oh, we could take it or leave it. I was doing very well at the radio station. I will damn him. What? Just, you know, the the radio station, they, you know, they put this stuff in the house, but it wasn't like, oh, yeah, she wants to work. This is great. They they, they act like they didn't even need you. Yeah. But they needed you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he then got horny. Yes. And went out and met a babe. Yeah. Do you know who the babe is? Uh... Uh... No. Did I know her to begin with? Yeah. No. Do you know who she is now? I wouldn't know her to see her again. But, but you saw pictures. Um, I was all in the business. What do you mean I was all in the business? I mean, you know, you you have to you <laughs> you, you have to have the discussion and and face it. And that was the first time that I know of in my life that somebody even stupid boyfriends in high school or college or whatever, and of course, you know, stupid boys do stupid things, so do stupid girls. Didn't but, you do something crazy like you got married after you knew a guy for like five months? No, for a year, and we yeah. were married for five months. And this is the former co-worker at the radio station. Yeah, you knew I, a guy at the radio station. Yeah. You had an affair with him. Not an affair. Well, you met him. You Nobody fucked him. Nobody was married. Right? You had sex with him. Yeah. And then you married him a short time thereafter, yeah. and then you only stayed married for five months. Yeah. How do you only stay and married And then you for still have months? to work together? Yeah. Well, this is the problem, Robin. This is why in the workplace That's why drama I don't fuck chapter... Robin. She begs me, and I won't do it. <laughs> I'll see you. Yeah. Like, sometimes, sometimes maybe you need to do that to release the tension, and then that's it. Right. You know, um... Uh, that's why I do not believe in relationships like that. Romance. That's why you don't believe in relationships. Damn right. Yeah, you, you have the experience. And that's in the right. book, I go into the experience. Now, listen, let me tell you something. We had met at a particular time in my life. I think I was like 27 years old. And, you know, everything was going well with my radio career and everything. I said, and, you know, I was raised in the suburbs of New Jersey. And I always knew I wanted to get married and have kids. I met this guy. I'm thinking, okay, well, you know. I think this is the one. You know, he was a little bit like 11 years older than me. And, and we dated for about a year. We got married, uh, like 250 people. We went to Rio for our honeymoon, came back, <laughs> came back. And I'm just like, what the hell did I do? Even walking down the aisle, I was like, what the hell did I do? But back then, I didn't have the balls that I have right now to turn around and say, you know what? I'm not marrying you. And we're going to turn this whole thing into a party. Everybody, your gifts will be returned by Monday. I didn't have those balls. I would right. do it now, though. Um, but yes, uh, I... Was uh, he shocked that five months later you turned to him and said i want a divorce no um well probably that i went along with it so yeah. so willingly i mean right. he uh he just wasn't my cup of tea i don't know why i did it uh but it was before having children and purchasing property together and isn't purchasing it amazing, cars isn't it amazing how we do things in life mm. and we have no explanation for them like we don't even know why I know. You, you know what i mean like you married a guy nice guy i'm yeah. sure but like you know 
you weren't like all of a sudden you just go Jesus Christ five months later I, even walking down the aisle you know it's wrong yeah. and you do it anyway for what appearances or you want to make everyone happy or, yeah. or you think well it's maybe it's the thing to do well yeah. you know what I wanted family and right. I thought that I thought that I wanted uh, you know family with a, perhaps a guy in a suit or something like that it, you know do you think you were insecure particular type um, at the time, yeah. Oh, I was probably insecure about a lot. You probably were like, you know what? I don't know if I'll ever meet another guy. That oh no, 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 no. I never. My dance card was always full. As a single right. woman, I yes, please. I never had a problem you meeting. You fucked a ton of guys. No, not fucked. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I said I wasn't going to curse. <laughs> well, ah, just I apologize, everybody. <laughs> You're not a lady. That's um, for sure. No, but you want to know what? what? I never. Uh, I never had a problem dating, and I was a smart dater, and I and I always had my own career, and I. I had a very nice bachelorette life. Right. I just thought. It How was old were you when you got laid the first time? Seventeen. Seventeen years yeah. old. Tell me. Let me switch topics for a second. Yeah. Tell me what this whole controversy is with your friend Lisa Lampanelli. <clears throat> uh, Lisa. Yes. Uh, comes on my show all the time. Uh huh. Um, and uh, just to give people some background, she tweeted, well, Lena Dunham or something. She tweeted a picture of herself with Lena Dunham, the, the woman who writes for girls. And she said, uh, this is me with my nigga, mm -hmm. with the A at the end. Right. Okay. And you, I, I guess you went on TV and you just said. Hot topics. Hot topics. Mm -hmm. And you said, it's wrong. You know, I forget how you put You've it. You've taken liberties, I think it was. And yeah. it's not your place. Right. right. Unless you're a black person and you're not even sure that even a black person should use that word. It's a word that was uh, used uh, for oppressive reasons, blah, 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 blah. And you slammed her pretty hard. And she took it hard. Because she, I guess she had been on your show a bunch of times. I didn't slam her hard. She might have been shocked that I, that I, um, you know, Lisa and I have always gotten along. But, right. but one thing I have to say about me, and I don't know if this is how you are in your personal life, but, you know, just because you're my friend or just because I know you doesn't mean I won't call you to the carpet, honey. Because right. that's what being grown is all about. Right. You know, you call me to the carpet, I call you to the carpet. Now, if we're not mature enough to get past it, oh, well. And I stick by what I said regarding um, Lisa Lampanelli. And please don't talk about my people and how they throw that word around i get that right. but we've got our own problems over there in the black corner all right and right. That, that is a kitchen table word that is not a word that i particularly care to to have used out particularly by a white woman throwing it to another white woman about some stuff and what i said i mean and if lisa lampanelli wants to be mad about it oh well so in turn doesn't mean i don't like lisa i just don't like that particular action now if that's going to ruin everything about me and lisa oh well i thought she was more mature than that so so when you say mature so if you do have you been called out by people and you forgive them or do you get so mad that you say that's it i'm not going to be in their life anymore i mean because you you um, know she felt that not only did you slam her that day this is what she's told me recently she said and then Wendy came on the next day and slammed me again for it. It was like no, you brought it up a sec. Here, I'll play what she said. Here okay. All right. Here we go. Let's see. I don't know. I, I think she was more hurt than uh, anything. Oh, Lisa. Well, she must, she must, then she must think I'm a different kind of black. Well, so, I don't know what she thinks. Here, okay. listen to this. Mm -hmm. Wendy Williams, maybe she's not the biggest comedy fan. Maybe she doesn't get me as much as I thought she did. I didn't really get mad at her, honestly. I got, like, really hurt because I'm like, oh, my God, she hates me. But what I really got upset with her later was I wasn't mad. Just she goes on the next day, and she goes, she brought it up again. And right. she goes, Lisa, don't be afraid. And this is a quote. Don't be, don't be surprised if someone, if you use that word, slaps uh, and a black slaps woman slaps the mess out of her pretty face right one day she's going to use that word in the under the wrong circumstances which is always the wrong, wrong circumstances in front of the wrong person yeah. and as opposed to getting me just talking at her with my pinky greasy like she's going to get somebody who's going to smack her pretty white face i uh, i agree with you uh, that well uh, then why that, am i de why do i have to defend this <laughs> because uh, why are you getting upset with us <laughs> what did I do? i'm talking at you through her i'm talking i'm talking to her hey, I'm not Lisa. I don't use the N word. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying. Listen, yeah. listen, listen. Other than that, I've got no problem with Lisa, and she should not be offended. I appreciate her comedy and the whole bit, but I would caution her and any other white person or person of other if they think they can just throw that word around. With me, you're just going to get me talking at you like this. With the next person, you're going to get a smack in your face. Right. Yeah. No. You're playing okay. with fire. That's a word that fires people up. Okay. Uh, can Dominicans say the N word if uh, they want to use it? If they're brown it? skin, 
in Dominican? If, if they're light skinned, brown skinned, but they call themselves Dominicans, can they use the N word? I prefer not. You pre you'd rather they didn't. I, I'd rather that nobody did. Right. I mean, the fact is, is that you know the word is used so much, but all these white kids use it. Uh, teenage kids, okay, because they listen to rap music. They're and, into uh, rap, and they're into a certain culture. Yeah, they, th that's it, and that's uh, speaking of feuds. Yeah, the other big feud. You have a lot of feuds. I do. Well, uh, Adam Carolla, you had a feud. Leave right? it to you to remind me of every feud. Every single. I love your I, feuds. I, I don't have Adam Carolla. Adam yeah. Carolla, you had him on the from? show. No, you had him on. You had him on the show. Yeah. And you said the next day, Adam disrespected your audience. How did he disrespect your audience? Uh, Adam can be very sarcastic. I know. That. I don't recall uh, the exact circumstance. Right. Is that? Is that a bust of Beetlejuice? Yes, of course yeah. it is. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm, he used to sell those. <laughs> Did he? No yeah. studio would be complete without oh one. I think God. a lot of people who bought them never actually got the bust. <laughs> Wasn't that it, Robin? <laughs> I think it was a bad business, yeah. Actually, if I can be honest, that's his real head. I chopped his head up and just stuck it up there on a wall. <laughs> um, I don't recall exactly uh, with Adam what had happened. I right. just recall that there was a misunderstanding, and I ended up sending him a beautiful uh, bouquet of flowers and a champagne. Oh, and so you're on good terms. Yes. Uh, the new book is called Ask Wendy. It's in stores now. You don't miss the Wendy Williams show. Go to wendyshow.com. You know I'm going on Broadway. Yeah, now, yeah we were talking about I, Oh, my gosh. How now, why would you do that? I mean, you, you, how much time do you have in your life to go? To, yeah, you're I, still you, working the summer. I, yeah. I love it. I love the chaos. I'll be on the air. I'll be doing Broadway. Are well, you kidding me? How are you going to do that? We just sold our first, my production company just sold its first project to the TV guy. My channel so you, behind the scenes Chicago. What is that behind the scenes Chicago? It, the, where the cameras follow me from the TV and my frustrations with life, and maybe you know go I into see. the Bloomingdale's, buy something, and go out for lunch with some of my friends, and then go over to Chicago. It's a reality show. Yeah. So you're going to do a play, the play Chicago. Mm -hmm. Are you going to sing? Two songs. Two songs. Yes. Uh, did you now, do you sing? No. <laughs> do you have to audition for that? No, I didn't audition. They called up and asked me did I want to do it, and I said yes. But if you can't sing and you're in a musical, how do you handle that? I'm, pe I'm playing the role of Matron Mama Morton. Um... It, which is a role that has been played by they the role was um written to be played by a lot of different people I Sophia Vergara has played it um Queen Latifah has played it um uh, uh several actresses and people I uh, know I don't sing and I'm just getting into acting kind of sort of I you know I've done a few things How long a commitment is this 7 weeks 7 weeks and how hard is it to memorize all the lines It's difficult What do you, you sit at home and practice No this is what I tell my husband, I'm like, with all the drug addicts and dope fiends that are actually actors and actresses, you mean to tell me that a sober Wendy can't remember? Of course I can. So I'm looking forward to what I start on um, June 25th. You're sober? Sober, totally. I mean, like sober, like you had to go and declare I'm now sober? No, I didn't go to a rehab. I just stopped. Uh, you, were you drinking? No, coking. Coke? Yeah. Did you ever drink? Well, I still drink. Oh, you see, you're not sober. Well, I'm, I mean, I don't have a problem with drinking. Uh, how do you know you don't have a If you had a problem with Coke, what do you mean you don't have a problem with drinking? I didn't trade one for the other. Believe me, I'm very analytical. I drive myself crazy analyzing you, in so my you head. you can't go around saying you're sober if you drink. Well, listen, if you ever saw how high and dysfunctional I was on Coke, you would say, oh, yes, you're sober. I don't. I haven't traded one for the other. Organization is probably my you drink thing wine? that I do now. I do like wine. And yes. what do you do? You have a couple of glasses with dinner? No. What do you mean, no? I, it's a social thing, like out. If I'm out at a restaurant, I'll have glasses. You get, you get buzzed? You get drunk? I get buzzed. What do you get, about three or four glasses? Uh, yeah, big girl like me. How three often glasses. a week? Um, not even once a week. Uh, come on. I don't know. I don't go out and do really? eat like that. I don't, I don't go well, out just to eat like that. Maybe you don't have a problem. Yeah, no, I don't go out to eat like that, and I very rarely to never uh, open, uh, you know, booze at home. In, Somebody has to be over. In your new book, you say that a man. It doesn't matter how much money he has. It doesn't matter how uh, you know how great his conversation is. If his cock isn't the right size, that's not what I said. He can't talk his way out of it. That's not what I said. <laughs> that's what, what you said. No, 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 no. You said if the penis is not right, nothing will be right in the long haul. And what I'm talking for me, it's not size; it's that turtleneck. 
I don't want that extra skin. That's you it. You don't like foreskin? No, honey. Oh. No. I'm Have allergic. You and you can feel that, or is I, it just a look thing? I had an experience many, many years ago back when I was in college. And I, said, and I said, And I said, damn right. And I said, I will never visit this again. All right, Ever. hold on. <laughs> Let's analyze this. Ever. Are you talking about schmegma cheese? Schmegma. Just, just, it was just smell. It just, yes. Everything. Robin, girl. I mean, come right, on, Robin. On. Where, where did you go to college? <laughs> Northeastern. That's right. in that's Boston. A, that's a very good school. You went to Northeastern, you got intimate with a guy, another mm -hmm. student, I assume, or a teacher? Uh, <laughs> I'm not that, not that girl. Was it your professor? No. Did he spank you? I'm not that girl. You were bad in class? <laughs> no, seriously, you were with another student? Uh, yeah. Okay, you meet this guy, he takes you back to his place, he pulls down his pants, and he's got a, a, a an uncircumcised penis. Yes. You pull you, you. What were you doing? Blowing him? Uh, I mean, the works, and you know, you went through it, and then you know, back then though, you don't know as, or at least for me, you know, all the things that I say right now have always been in my head. It's just that I'm a little bit older now, and I don't mind saying it out loud. Yes, but did he warn you that he? No, was, there was no warning, no nothing. He pulled his pants, and you oh saw that my long God. Uh, skin. Ew. Which is the way God made us. This looked like a snuffle up, I guess. Okay, so you saw that, and then you, he said, I request a blowjob. Is that what it was? Was it a long term relationship or only once? No. Once. Yes. So tell me exactly what turned you off. You pulled back that skin, and you saw what? Cheese? It, it was just horrible. I don't want to go into details. Tell me what it was. It's just, that you saw. Horrible. The, 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 the smell, the look. It's just disgusting. Was it, was it a black man or a white man? A black man. A black man, you're saying that about? <laughs> You're a fool. Wow, Howard. I can't believe. That, well, I, I, so, so it was putting it in your mouth that made you disgusted. This, this is what I say in the between the sheets uh, drama chapter in the Ask Wendy book. I see. Uh, you know, I had, <laughs> I've had women. No, I'm going to bring this back around. All right. If you don't like what you see or feel from the from the gate, then don't go on more dates. If, if I don't care how much money, how cute, how tall, whatever. My problem. Why did you the, finish the act with the guy then? If that's because your I was motto. young and insecure and went through with it anyway. Oh. But now I would absolutely walk out. I'm gonna puke. Here, listen, I wanted to puke, and this is you know I get letters from women. One particular woman, I think she she told me she'd been married for like ten years plus. Howard, they have yeah. children together, and her husband's penis is too small and the sex is terrible first thing i say to her in the book is why did you even go on a second date with him were you that insecure well yes yes with that's the, right. Yes, yes, uh, yes. But let me just say something for the everything. people who if do have four skin. Then why is she complaining now? She's talking to me about get, talking to her husband about getting a penile enlargement. You're not going to insult him that way. Are you right. out of your mind? Yes. I, this I, is your problem. You deal with it. Well, I, 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 sorry for screaming. Well, wait wow. a minute. You you saw one man <laughs> with a foreskin, Wendy, and, and you decided. Every foreskin yes. would be bad. Done. That's it. <laughs> Done. Done. That's I'm it. not going to put you through it. I'm not going to put me through it. You say in 2011 you, ex you, oh you landed an exclusive interview with Charlie Sheen. Why out of all of the television and radio shows on the planet, <laughs> why did you get the exclusive with Charlie Sheen? How, wh wh what did you do to get that exclusive? Well, I like Charlie a whole lot. Yeah. I happen to be a fan. Yes. And uh, it also happens that my uh, the parent company of my show, the company that does Deb Marmer, Mercury is in oh. bed with Charlie Sheen so in the anger management him. show. And so relationships uh, form. So that was a big deal. Yeah, that was a big deal. Do you stay in touch with him? No, he's been back to the show a couple times, though. Yeah, he uh, treats you well and you yeah, treat him oh, well. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what do you think is going on with him? Um, something where he's functioning and, and apparently handling his business. You do? You think so? You think he's all right? Um, I, I, I think that he, he's Charlie is Charlie. When Joan Rivers and Chelsea Handler were having a feud, yeah. you took Joan Rivers' side. Well, I do believe in respecting the legends, Char uh, Howard. That would be like somebody disrespecting you. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. you, you don't understand exactly what you meant to me at a particular point in my life. I have two so two pictures of celebrities in a very particular area in my house. Uh, one is Oprah. Uh, she autographed, and it, you, this is many, many, many years ago. Right. And one is a picture of me and you for my first time that I came here. You're kidding? Yes. Look at me and Oprah. Me. Yep. Wow. Yep.
Boy, Oprah's pissed. I no, no, right. No. I I am By not. Way, I am circumcised. Just so you know. <laughs> I, I am not a star effer. I enjoy what I do. Right. Um, but I'm a little bit too long in the tooth to be um, a groupie for anybody. But there are two people that I have absolute respect you for. You love Oprah for different ways. Well, I'm talking about you right now. Right. Oh. Um, I forgot what even brought me on this topic. What, uh, what? You were talking about disrespecting hero Joan Rivers and Chelsea. Oh, yes. Handler. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's right. all. Look, you don't have to kiss anybody's ass. I'm not going to kiss right. your ass. I'm not going to kiss, kiss Oprah's kiss ass. ass. However, uh, yes. however, um, you know, that was just Joan. That's all. Right. And yeah. I like and I like Chelsea, but wow, really? Yeah, Joan is a is a legend. She's somebody who paved the way. Happy for a birthday, lot of women. Joan! She just turned eighty. I 80 tweeted her. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Your teeth look good, Howard. They do. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Very natural. I noticed oh, that thanks. on uh, Very... AGT the other night. They look good. Yeah, they look really good. Yeah, thanks. And I love your work on uh, AGT as well. Thanks. I'm having fun with it. Yeah. I wish it wasn't so many hours though. I know they. Uh, so you have to use all your vacation time to work on um, yes. America's Got Talent. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. You love Wendy's using, they isn't even taking vacation, and she's working a second job. Well, Wendy's she's got insane. all these things going. Wendy loves working. She's I do. Uh, only you know, for a moment. No, I like listen, free time. How, how old are you now, 60? I'm 59. Yeah, I'm not going to be working at I'm that not going to turn 60. I, I I'm just so this 59. is all for yeah. the next 10 yeah. years. Yeah. You're going to yeah. do it all. Yeah. You look good. You yeah, look good, Howard. Yeah, well, I'm trying yeah. to hang in there. It's would tough. you get a facelift? Do you get Botox? Do you do anything? No, no. Oh, come on. If I did something, would I look like this? Your hair is absolutely gorgeous. That's your advantage. That's I know it is. No. Uh, no wigs, no uh, extensions. No, no extensions. I don't dye it. Yeah, that's so. all the gray you have. That's all the gray. I Good have. for you. Look at me. Yeah, See? we're gonna live to be a hundred. We are. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Are you, how much longer are you going to work? I don't know. You know, I keep saying like maybe I shouldn't work for that much longer, and then I, but every time I stop, I'm like bored or something. Not bored. I'm never bored. I, I have a lot of hobbies and interests. Are you still but, taking pictures and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I'm way into photography. Yeah. You should get windy uh, behind, in front of your camera. Yeah, let me do some pictures. You did a PETA ad. You were nude in that. Yeah. You? yeah. I'd rather go naked than wear fur. Yeah, I only shoot nudes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a fun ad to do, too. Yeah. I made it. Yeah. Um, it was my first time ever taking naked pictures. I'm very... I'm going to shoot you wigless. I don't want yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, I, I do like to pick up hobbies. I want to I want to start knitting this knitting, summer. Yeah. Knitting? It's, uh, yeah. I want to make... My mom does that. Sometimes. I want to make a gigantic pair of black leggings in, with a 40-inch inseam, because that's what I have. Everything is too short. <laughs> sweater leggings, and they're going to be sexy ready. sexy woman. You know that? Thank you, Howard. What do you wear? Thong? I, thong, yeah. bikinis, boy shorts, oh, you know, yeah. all that stuff. You look good. I feel good, Howard. Thank yeah, you. And you got a nice face. Thank you, Howard. You really do. Thank you. Sure. I bet you're a lot of fun in the sack. I d don't get complaints. Yeah. You probably wouldn't be satisfied with my penis size, though. Uh, you're very, very into that whole... She would leave I, you after the yeah. first I, I did not say anything about size. Be <laughs> clear, Howard. Know, you're Jewish, you. so I, I know you don't have that extra meat. I don't. I don't have a lot of meat. <laughs> I, I certainly have no excess, that's for sure. Well, I'm just saying... Do I, you like a, a thicker or a longer? What, do you, what, is, what is the thing? Oh, with she you? needs Thickness a Thickness or... I look at Wendy and I know she needs girth. I I, I like a thick man. You do? I, yeah, yeah. Because I'm neither. I'm ne neither thick nor long. Well, as long as you don't have that turtleneck, it's good. King of all blacks, you're on the air. Go ahead and say hi to Wendy Williams here celebrating her new book, Ask Wendy. It's in stores now. She tackles every single topic, avoids nothing. Go ahead. Here you go. I just want to tell Wendy how sexy she is on her show. I freeze frame it and do what I got to do real quick. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, that's such a compliment. He jerks off to you. Why do you go, ooh? Oh, thanks, King. Why do you think your ratings went up 48%? I, uh, it, <laughs> People are jizzing what, what, on you. Whatever it takes. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> sure. I like, I, like, I like when she smiles and like opens her mouth real well. I, just <laughs> love, I love when she does that. <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Talk about analyzing. <laughs> right. All right. What I'm waiting for, what I'm waiting for is uh, is her husband's book. That's a real man. <laughs> you ever a husband? No. Why is her husband a real man? Be because he he don't give a fuck. Like you know what I'm saying? He'll tell her to shut the fuck up. He seems like that type of dude that don't care how much money she got. He's gonna tell her to shut the fuck up when it's uh 
appropriate. Does your husband tell you to shut the fuck up when it's appropriate? In, in not in those terms, but yes. Why do you think he's my husband? A big girl like me with a big mouth and an assured personality? <clears throat> I don't want to be with some man who can't, you know. That's does he manhandle you? I don't mean it in a real abusive way, but I mean, does he, get, when he's, when he's having sex with you, does he very aggressive with you and flip you around and stuff? Yeah. Definitely, it makes me feel like a woman. He does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need that, right? I need that, and I enjoy that. Right, you can't be with a guy you feel like you could beat up. No, no, no. All right, King. Thank you. That was, that was the first husband. <laughs> yeah. Oh my! That's what happened the first time around. <laughs> well, let me say, you are on fire. Thank you, Howard. You're on fire, Wendy. I think you're doing fabulously well. Thank you, Howard. How old is your son now? He's 12. He's on the honor roll. He's he's just doing it all. Of course he Wonderful. is. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you probably bust his balls if he's not doing well in school, well, right? He you understands stay on top of him. The, yeah, well, he understands that's that's his job, to do well in school. Yeah. I hope he's circumcised. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> he, he is. You made sure you took care of that. Damn right, yeah, Hal. Absolutely. Uh, Wendy Williams is going to be in Chicago, the play. She's going to have her wig line. Mm -hmm. She's going to have a reality show. Yeah. She's going to have her regular TV show. Yeah. There isn't anything the woman can't do. She's When's doing the magazine? It all. That's got to be coming. When is the magazine coming out? Well, I don't have a full magazine, but I do do a column in Life and Style Weekly in the back. There you go. Now, I've been doing that for years, though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, there's not a free minute, free minute in this woman's day. You'd be shocked. I, I take all my free time and I spend it by myself. Are you a very organized person? Yes. You that, must be. That the, the trade-off to, to, yeah. to, to getting high. You know, you ask me, well, what's the trade-off? The trade-off is probably be being organized to the point of getting on people's nerves, so I have to dial back sometimes. I'm constantly, excuse me, air conditioner's killing me. <clears throat> Not in here, but in general. Right. This time of year, I'm constantly making lists, and I try to be as organized as possible. And now, you know, how the show is live out of New York, so, you know... It's, it's I like, didn't realize that. Yeah, we're live out of New York. Check your local listings. I'm um, everybody watching. But I love doing live TV. I got to be there on time. And when you were famous, yeah, and doing coke, yeah, how did you score coke without being discovered? Oh, thank God, it was all before camera phones and all that other kind of stuff. And yeah. you know, you, you had a dealer. Yeah, several dealers. Um, no, but one main one, but a couple of side ones when he wouldn't answer his phone. How much coke were you doing a day? <laughs> um, a day. Easily three, an eight ball wow. every two days. No what kidding. What is an eight ball? See, I don't even three know grand, what that is. And it, it'd be wow. all on me. And and I was a secret Snorting doer. Snorting it? Snorting it, smoking it, cooking it on spoons. Those spoons in my oh. house were all black underneath. I was Cooking it and shooting it? No, not shooting it. Dropping it in a pipe over a layer of cigarette ash. Like crack? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, not, wow. Like, not like crack crack. I'm not going to even be highbrow. I've smoked crack before. Wow. And so uh, when you went to score, people would recognize you, right? Uh, not so much because he. you get it to a point where, you know, you get it dropped off at, this, at the radio station or, you know, come by, uh, meet me at uh, the 7-Eleven or I'll drive up to Jerome Avenue up in the Bronx. Three What's it cost morning. for uh, three grams? Back then, $35. Yeah dollars a gram i wasn't going broke on it oh okay i wasn't going broke and i also was not a user with a circle of people so there were there are not a lot of people who could tell my story so i'd rather put it out there before it gets out there so because you're so responsible i can't imagine uh, i know yeah what was that all about yeah. rebelling against i didn't even lose weight all the coke i sniffed i, I, never, I never lost weight on it and damn never, it and you never traded sex for coke and i never traded sex for coke oh my god but, you must have been very promiscuous during those days. <laughs> no 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 because no. i was obsessed all i wanted to do was that wow yeah. uh tim you're on the air go ahead and gilbert arizona and then we got to move along hey, Howard, when wendy was talking about the lisa lampanelli thing and robin brought up the point that if we use the word everybody else should be able to use the word and the way that the comedians they all call their kids little niggers and they throw the word around yeah. and it's a cultural thing and if it's supposed to be so hateful and the worst thing in the world to say and i would never say to a black person but the way it's bantered around and it's so intellectually an empty argument to be so upset for her to use it the way she did. Well, if some if some guy came up and started using the word kike around me, I'd bust him right in the fucking face. Do you understand so, what I'm saying? I get it. And so. Tim, and Tim, you just said it yourself. You wouldn't use the word. And I understand how comedians throw it around, and maybe she's throwing it around inside of a venue where people are paying for tickets and sitting and watching her. It's just a different story than putting it out there on Twitter. I just didn't like the context. I don't like people using it. You can argue with me all day, Tim, and I still feel the way I feel, and obviously I was, you do too. Did you? Watch 
watch this uh, special with uh, uh, this woman. She's a, a, a black comedian. Her name is uh, Samore. You ever hear of Some her? Samore. Samore. Yeah. I never heard of her before. She's, she's fantastic. Funny. She's funny as hell, right? Yeah, I just I, I taped her special. And yeah. Man, is she funny. She you is know funny. her? Yeah. Samore? Yeah, I do. Yeah, but, you know, it's different when a black woman uses uh, that word. Than I don't women. really think it's different. Um, I do. I, I do. I it's, don't, it's not different. It's the word. I think it's different, but it's still the word. It's not a word that I use in my life. It's not a word that I use, whether it's with the E-R or the A at the end. There are just certain words that I just don't use, and that's one of them. Well, all right, anyway, listen. I'm going to throw you off. We spoke for an hour. When you, I got to get up. We have fun with you. Yeah, do you realize that I have to get to the studio? And actually, I, I got a show to do in two oh, hours. Please, you're fine. <laughs> Listen, Wendy Williams, I, I love you, and I think Howard, you're terrific. You know, it, it's just always amazing to me that you've gone from somebody who has really uh, seen me through a lot of traffic and a lot of crap for years to somebody who I consider to be one of my showbiz friends. Oh, so well, thank it, you. It's, well, it's, it's always an honor. Feeling is mutual. Thank you, Howard. And uh, if you're a moil out there, Wendy wants everyone circumcised. <laughs> yeah, just so chop it look. immediately. Get that shit off your dick. <laughs> All right, we'll be back right after these words. <laughs>